You're watching the Pac-12 on ESPN. A beautiful night in Los Angeles from the newly renovated Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum. There is Traveler revving everyone up. And the USC fans are hoping to have a newly minted Trojan squad after the first under 500 year for this school in nearly two decades. And here come those Trojans. The opponent tonight, Fresno State, 12 wins last year, certainly not a walkover as USC is amped for game number one here in 2019. We thank you for joining us, Jason Benetti, Rod Gilmore, Quint Kesnick is downstairs. Look, Rose Bowl, Cotton Bowl, five and seven. So, so where is USC right now? <laughs> well, they're under a lot of pressure. A lot of people at USC feeling the heat and you start with Clay Helton, the head coach. He is on the hot seat, has been on the hot seat since they finished last season at five and seven. And you know what else? Tailback you, all those great running backs, that's a thing of the past. Now it's the air raid and this offense throw it a whole bunch and that's under pressure. USC needs a strong performance tonight. If you were watching earlier today, the noon Eastern game in Tallahassee, Boise State comes back, beats Florida State. That's the runner up in the conference that USC has got to get a face full of tonight. Fresno State won that league last year. Look, let, let's not get this twisted. This is not David versus Goliath. Yeah, did you know that Boise State actually won the Mountain West Conference last year? And in fact, they've won 22 games over the last two years. This is a blue collar, tough nosed team that feels that it is equivalent physically to USC. So we're not having David and Goliath tonight. This is going to be a hard physical game. Jeff Tedford leads Fresno State and USC fans know that name. Jeff Tedford has his Bulldogs ready to go. A couple of great quarterbacks from local cities coming next. Back to college football on the West Coast. USC and Fresno State meeting number five all time. And USC off that five and seven season, but so much skill, position, talent, they go to a new offensive identity that we'll tell you about throughout this telecast but certainly skill position talent through the roof, right, Quint? Uh, yeah, the roof here has been restored. This uh, nearly century-old iconic Coliseum, two-year project, 300 million. Meanwhile, the offense, the renovation, is a work in progress. And Clay Helton switching to the air raid is based upon his belief that he has one of the top receiving cores in the country. This is a group last year that did amazing things. When you think about Tyler Vaughns, Amon Ross St. Brown, uh, Valus Jones, Michael Pittman. They've got height, they've got the ability to win matchups one-on-one -on -one downfield, and the ability to take little gains and stretch it yards after catch. The air raid fits this wide receiver personnel perfectly. They are riled up. They want a bounce back season here at the Coliseum, that's for sure. Oh, uh, we're gonna get a quick look right away at the new USC offense. Off we go. On a bounce, Jones approaches. And he's got space. Good start for Troy. Across midfield, Jones. Inside the 30-yard line. 61 yards to start. Well, Quint talked about the talent at the wide receiver spot. He's one of those guys. Bayless Jones is one of their key receivers, and he's got great quickness, great speed, and he got to the outside that time, and they're really set up, but there is a flag down here at about the 30-yard line going in. Late flag, and our Pac-12 officiating crew will sort it out. Our referee is Mike McCabe tonight. Well, if it is against USC, that's pretty much the story of the last 12 months. Something good, a backpedal. Uh, what did uh, Clay Helton tell us? He said he had four games last season. 
near the end he lost by seven points and they had penalties and turnovers which would have changed things dramatically. The ruling on the field is it the first down the previous play is under review. Well we are 10 seconds into our season and crew we are going to instant replay. Well, Jason, welcome to the Saturday Night Crew. <laughs> We're happy to have you here. Maybe you can do something with speeding up games for us and the rest of the country. <laughs> it's a Pac-12 video after dark is what we have for you tonight. The question is, was he out of bounds well, at the 45? I, yeah, if he did, that's fine, but we don't need a flag for that. And, yeah, that looked like a foot black shoe on the white mark. I'll move that one back. And this is a great look. This is our blimp look. How about this? It's an awesome look. Yeah. I want to learn more about the blimp, though. You think we could do that later? You know what? I'm glad you asked about that because I promise you we'll do a little blimp behind the scenes look at some point tonight. How about that? Does look like he's out of bounds, though. I agree with you. One more look overhead at the brand spanking new L.A. Coliseum. Impressed with it? Oh, my goodness. It had been a couple years since I was here, but they have done a magnificent job. After review, it was determined there were two number sevens for the receiving team on the play. That's a five-yard penalty. We will re-kick the play. Wow. Wow. So it wasn't simply stepping out of bounds, and it was double numbers. And double numbers are kind of a thing in college football. A lot of players like to have the single digit numbers and sometimes they are on the same team and usually what you do is you put on a jersey with a different number so you don't have this penalty. Well the interesting part about this is Rod you have Jones who has a slip on 92 and Pittman who has a slip on number 98. We were told about that before the game maybe they need to invest in a third slip on <laughs> jersey. Number seven for USC is now wearing number 94. And they have. They got it. They got the third one. This is a slot machine with one seven missing. There's one. There's the other. Good catch by that Pac-12 officiating crew. Wow. I mean, 10 seconds in, the roller coaster started for USC fans already. And Fresno State gets a do-over because special teams week one is usually a big issue. So they've had their issue. They've had time to kind of correct their rushing lanes, coverage lanes. Well, Jones wants to do it again from two yards deep. And he's chopped down at the 19. So JT Daniels in his second season as the starting quarterback, growing confidence for that young man. And he will lead out a Trojan offense under the air raid. How great is JT Daniels' confidence? Well, they have a weekly quarterback competition, and he wins a heavyweight belt for it. And today, as he was coming into the stadium, he was wearing that belt. He was wearing it during our meetings as well. He is 5-6 and six as a starter for USC. And we'll see what he can do under this new offense. We'll detail for you throughout the telecast. Quick trigger has a completion across the 20 yard line to Amon Ross St. Brown. So that belt that he was wearing, it looks great with khakis, doesn't it? <laughs> All I know is that he's very proud of that belt. He had it on yesterday, wore it in today. We asked him if he'd wear it to the, to the game in warm ups. He said, eh, might be not that, com not that comfortable. Yeah, wearing it to sleep was also <laughs> something he bristled at, but he's willing to show that confidence across campus as Daniels unloads to the far side for a first down across the 30 to Tyler Vaughn. All right, get used to this. The ball comes out quick. That is one of the principal keys for the air raid offense and for what they wanted at USC. Quit getting the quarterback hit, get the ball out quickly. So this is a quick passing game right now. One step, gather, and get the ball out. This one's batted and taken in by Fresno State. Michael Walker, and they're going to say incomplete. Walker tried to reel it in, and it is an incomplete pass. I think he's down, too. And it might have been a hit from one of his teammates as he was trying to get that ball. Yeah, now there he is. No, actually, 
he got the hit from Pittman. That's Michael Pittman number six who comes in and prevents a pick. That ball was tipped by Justin Rice, one of the linebackers. So that's one of those keys. If you're a lineman or a linebacker, right, and you can't get to the quarterback, get your hands up off that quick release. Daniels to throw, wanted the long ball. Now he checks down and has another completion across the 35 and out of bounds. Pittman this time involved in the play with his hands at a gain of nine. Yeah, great coverage downfield by Fresno State. But listen, when you're dropping seven or eight, it's hard to get a pass rush on an air raid team. Graham right, USC now, yeah. Yeah, Graham Harrell, the new offensive coordinator, goes to the ground and has another first down just short of midfield. Malapai with the carry and a gain of nine. He was about half and half run pass at North Texas. Graham Harrell was. That's Malapai out of the backfield. Daniels has been on target and he's got another first down for USC. Vaughn's this time. Listen, if you're Fresno State, you, you want to make JT Daniels hold the ball as long as possible. And they've done a good job of making him come off his first receiver, but he's had enough time to go to his second and third progression. This time he turns the other direction and uses those feet to slide across the 35. You know, talking to the Fresno State staff, Bert Watson, particularly the D coordinator, he says, look, we, we know the first 15 plays or so, they're, they're going to come out and test us. They've been talking all offseason about this air raid and throwing the ball. We have to weather the storm. So let's see if they can weather this storm now. So far, so good for USC. To the outside. Another first down. St. Brown diving across the line of the gain and Juju Hughes with the stop. But there you see the talent that Q was talking about at the wide receiver position. Yeah, and JT Daniels is doing a good job of distributing. He doesn't care who he throws it to. To me, he's a much more mature person, not just a quarterback, than he was last year. And we'll talk more about that. He was very open with us yesterday when we chatted with him. They get his feet moving this time. Little shuffle, and he's got a completion to Croman Hoke, the tight end. Yeah, he, he was a guy last year, JT Daniels, that, you know, first of all, he should have been in his senior year of high school. And secondly, he seemed like he was on automatic pilot, almost a robo quarterback. He didn't seem relaxed, didn't seem to be himself. Not the case this year. No, he said he didn't even know what to study last year as he was getting ready for the season. Swing pass, Malapai has a first down. Chris Gaston, the DB, comes up to stop him. This offense doesn't have a lot of plays. It's not tough on the quarterback to decide what he's going to do. It's pretty simple. You have two safeties deep. You, know, you kind of want to run the ball. You see one safety. Well, you can throw it, and you're looking usually to one side of the field with your progression. A lot easier for him than it was last year. Only incompletion, the tip ball for JT Daniels. Over the middle. Touchdown! Pittman again. A flag is in. See if it stands. The flag's at the nine yard line. A surgical start. An eligible receiver downfield offense number seven. Five yard penalty. Replay first down. It's not been lucky seven tonight for USC. So this has to be that Carr was covered up and was not an eligible receiver and still went downfield. Clay Helton just said there is no way to the Pac-12 officiating crew. They believe that they had it right. First down and 15 instead of the touchdown. And they'll go to the bubble for St. Brown, who could break one tackle only. Yeah, Clay Helton uh, getting all over the linesman on the far side about, about that last call. Three yards, the offensive line has it. And, and, and he kind of jokingly said to the linesman, that guy can't sprint three yards that fast, if he, even if he tried. 
he's going to get the stopwatch out before this quarter is over for the linesman. Certainly a lot of pressure on Clay Helton after a five and seven season though. Free runner Daniels for Carr. He broke one. And he's out of bounds before the line to gain third down. These backs are going to have a lot of pressure to catch the ball this season. Well, if you blitz, as Fresno State did, you have to have someone who immediately recognizes that they got to be on the back coming out of the backfield, whether that is a safety or a linebacker. When you use a linebacker, you've got a mismatch, and uh, JT Daniels knows it right away, and he went right to it. They were leaning on Walker there in the coverage, who is back in the game. Michael Walker, the talented linebacker. Daniels took Carr out of the backfield, slips one, Carr, goal line, touchdown USC. All about getting your key athletic guys in space and letting them do their thing. And that's what they did on this opening drive with the air raid. Space and let your athletic guys make a guy miss. Open field tackling. Really on the field a touchdown. The previous play is under review. USC fans are going to feel like their whole season is under review. Yeah. Yeah, not great open field tackling by Fresno State on that opening drive, but that's pretty much expected in week one of the season. You just don't do a lot of open field tackling, if any, during summer camp. Fall camp, I should say. Now, does Carr get in? Good miss there, but does he get in? Did he step out? Maybe that, that left, left foot. That left foot might have stepped on the line. Left foot, not that one, this one coming up. Yep, there yes. it is. Yep, just inside the one. Good find, Rod. Uh, we talked about leading up to this game, you know, USC's tailback U, right? So you have all these wide receivers. There's a chance tailback U shows as receivers this year. Yeah, and they will catch more balls. But listen, I, I look out there and I see those jerseys, you know, Mike Garrett, you know, uh, Charles White, Marcus Allen. Those guys set the, the history, the trend of giving the ball to the tailback and let him do things. Here's another look down here for the officials to take a peek. That left foot. And that, watch where the ball is. Yeah. That, that ball, I don't think it crossed or broke the plane before that left foot stepped out. From that angle, it looks like it's shy, but it's a little hard to tell from that angle. You angle, you really see the foot out, but you need the other side for the ball and remember if they can't see the ball and indisputable video evidence beyond all doubt is the yep. standard the call on the field being touchdown is important yeah and yeah you're absolutely right if they can't see the ball and this is probably their best shot at looking at the ball well you see the foot clearly they don't see the ball the ball is blocked by the running back and, and with each look you have either the ball or the foot. So the question is, can they piece together something to overturn? The ruling on the field of a touchdown stands as called. Exactly right. Not enough video evidence. You couldn't see the ball. You could not say definitively that the ball did not break the plane, even though you saw the foot out of bounds. Turns out the return that got pulled back because of penalty was just a prelude to the premiere of the new USC offense, which had a good look on its first drive. Extra point is good for McGrath. USC on the opening drive puts it in with Carr. Tom, thank you very much. 7-0 your score, USC, an opening drive touchdown against the Mountain West champions from last year in Fresno State from just a couple hours away. And the Bulldogs will see it for the first time with Rod Gilmore, Quint Kesnick downstairs, Jason Benetti, USC off a of five and seven season. It's first losing season in nearly 20 years with the air raid offense of Graham Harrell has an opening drive touchdown with JT Daniels going 10 for 11 in his second season 
as starting quarterback. And this opening kickoff for USC will be a touchback. And Jorge Reyna, the starting quarterback for Fresno State. He's from Downey, about 13 miles southeast of here. He grew up wanting to be a USC Trojan. And he, in his first FBS start, is wearing the other colors here at the Coliseum. He told us he's very calm, ready to go. We'll see. Well, he's wearing the other colors, but he's wearing number 11, which was Matt Leinert's number at USC, who was his idol. And so he is a USC fan playing at home, and he may say he's calm and cool, but he's got to be feeling a little bit now. He gives it off on the first play, and it's Jalen Cropper, the freshman, for a gain of 12. Jorge Reyna, his father Jorge here, he went and bought an extra 50 tickets. Ouch. There is a very large cheering section for young Jorge Reyna. And we'll detail his family and how close he is to them as the day goes along. But he is an interesting young man who is so happy to be under center in his first FBS start. On the roll, his first pass is overthrown. It's incomplete and second down coming up. Well, when you bring so many people to a game, you know what you have to do. Well, yeah, you got to tailgate, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, Reyna couldn't participate, but that didn't stop his family from enjoying this moment of having him back home. You know, he hasn't played in the Coliseum before. He spent a year at L.A. Junior College, but this is a bigger deal for the family. How about the one dude in the USC gear? You can see there's like a slight turning off of your brain that has to happen that, in the family. That can't be allowed, right? <laughs> you can't wear that. <laughs> Second down for Reyna. Quick hitter, Jared Rice, the leading returning receiver in third down. You talk about Reyna saying, hey, he's, he's, he slept well last night. He's calm and cool. Look, everybody gets worked up for their first start. You know, you go through warm-ups and you feel like you're out of breath. You don't know how you make it through. I felt that way. Every player I know felt that way. But you have to get him comfortable. Give him a couple easy throws. Let him run the ball. Let him take a hit. But you got to make him feel like, I'm up to the speed of the game. It's just football. It's a talented USC defensive line wanting to put some heat on. They rush for Reyna using his legs is just short of the line to gain. He lost the ball. Was he down is the question. USC has it if it is a fumble. Trojan football. So you saw one throw by him that was over the head of a receiver. His first time running, he can't put the ball away and protect it. You're a little nervous. You got to get that first hit out of the way. And the ball comes out this time. So to me, these are nerves. That's not protected as well as it should be. He's got the left hand. He's going into contact. Needs to be covered up. There is the knee down, but the ball is coming out. That is a fumble. Replay, if it's looking at it, will confirm this. Ball out before that knee is down. It was already coming out. Now Ote Ote with the hit. And you saw Dad, who was Reyna's coach growing up, a little forlorn for the moment, but there's a lot of time remaining in this game. We saw it earlier today with Florida State Boise State. Yeah, with a freshman quarterback, true freshman quarterback, and it took him a while to get over the nerves and get comfortable. Daniels on target again for Vaughn. He is 11 for 12. Now, I don't think Fresno State can continue to play off. I think they're doing the right thing by not blitzing very often and dropping seven or eight in coverage. But look how much room they're giving the receivers out there. That's a three-step nightmare. Two receivers to the bottom side. That's where Daniels goes. And a diving grab for St. Brown. They've known each other for a long time, and they hook up again. You know as a defensive back that the ball is coming out quickly. There is no need to fly out of there on a back pedal. If you're playing zone and watching the quarterback's eyes, when that quarterback here takes a step and a half, you should stop your pedal and you should be driving on the receiver. And look how they're flying out of there. Again, it comes out quickly. There yeah. is Pittman, the senior. Look, now, the difference is an experienced cornerback knows this stuff. When you're playing your first few games as a corner or, or a safety guy, you're just trying to do your job. You're not the big picture you don't really get. 
two sophomores back there in the defensive backfield. Look at all that room. Look at all that room. They see that right away. Malapai cuts it upfield. He's got a first down. I mean, Fresno State was a tremendous defensive team last year. They did not give up a lot of points, about 14 a game, but they lost a couple dudes in the secondary, and they're feeling it right now. Well, Brian is a senior. He's a veteran player. But on the other side, Gaston is a sophomore. You've got a lot of guys playing for the first time out there. So USC is aware of that, and they're looking those guys up too. But you, you can't play that far off against this offense. You see already the sheer self-belief for Daniels and this offense. They've been raving about Graham Harrell, and Carr carries him into the end zone. His second score. We talked about USC scripting those first 15 plays. And withstanding that if you are Fresno State, didn't get a chance at it. When you have only five guys in the box defending the run, it makes it really easy for the linemen like Vera Tucker to get out and take out a guy like Walker who was in the middle trying to make a play. You got a lineman on you. Not going to happen. The question was, does Stephen Carr have his burst back from ankle and back trouble? Yeah. You got an answer? I think we got an answer. Yeah. 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 Watch him power this in. As powerful as that USC offense, 14 0. ESPN College Football is presented by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Did you know that the Coliseum is an historic landmark built in 1923? And Two years and $315 million later, it is restored and renovated. Look, at that's a coffee table, a replica of this iconic building. Two Olympics, two Super Bowls, a World Series, Jason. The Pope, a bunch of presidential visits, and the 2028 Olympiad aiming to have track and field here as well. They, they've done a wonderful job in terms of the luxury suites, video screens, new concessions, new lighting. New aisles, every seat in this stadium is new. And best of all, they got great Wi-Fi. <laughs> Something for everyone, Q. He had to bring up the World Series, the White Sox lost, by the way. That's that's your opening yeah. salvo as a crew. Yeah, but you know what I noticed? I, I noticed that that coffee table, that's a $6,000 coffee table. That's almost as much as Q paid for his coffee table. Almost, not quite. Is Q's just a big lacrosse stick? What's your coffee table? Yeah. <laughs> That's I. I it's I'd great. Buy one of those for six thousand dollars? Can we pool our resources? Uh, you want it, it split? Would be, it would be seventy-five percent of your money. You get it on weekends. <laughs> I'll take it during weekdays. Look, Fresno State. This is a huge series already for the oh. defending Mountain West champs. Hey, remember we saw Florida State jump out on Boise State in that first quarter, and they ended up losing that game. Yeah, it's a cautionary tale, certainly, is here is Ronnie Rivers. I mean, you watch that game. We were trading messages. Kendall Bryles looked like he was going to become president to Tallahassee by the end of October uh, after that first couple of quarters, and then Boise State came firing back. Yeah. Reyna, there's your quick throw, and it goes to the outside for a short gain to Rice. Yeah, there's a real effort to settle him down now. I know he said, hey, he slept well, and he was relaxed and comfortable. It's just another game. You can say that, but you don't feel that when you step on that Coliseum turf. You feel the anxiety, the moment, and everything else. Now that he's had a series, now that he's overthrown a guy, he's had a fumble, you know, he'll start to settle in. He took a hit, so now he ought to be ready to play. Third and one. It's Reyna himself up the Coliseum sideline as he dreamed about for years and he's got a first down on a gain of 13. But let's not forget Jeff Tedford has coached a lot of quarterbacks. He's taught a lot of guys how to play through difficult situations in the life. Reyna is just the latest. You, you could even call Tedford sort of a quarterback whisperer with the prize pupil being Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers. Kyle Bowler as well. Joey yep. Harrington at Oregon as Josh Pokett has checked into the game as the second running back. 
along with Rivers, who's across midfield for the first time. And this helps Reyna. You got two guys on the offense that are veterans that know how to play. Rivers is one, and Rice, the tight end, is the other. They're dynamic players. Let them do their thing. He doesn't have to be the star at quarterback. Just be the point guard. Let them do their thing. Play action. He felt the pressure and fires to the sideline for a first down to Zane Pope. So, Reyna with a first down grab to Pope. Yeah, nice throw on the move. So, he's a dual threat quarterback. He can run, he can move, and he's very comfortable throwing on the move. And seeing Pope, a guy who's also, you know, a young receiver, catch that ball early on will help Reyna out. First FBS start for Jorge Reyna, and he uses his legs again into the arms of two USC players, including the captain of the defense, John Houston, the Mike linebacker. Yeah, this USC defense has had issues, had issues last season at times, but up front, they are big. They are bigger than I think I've seen them in the last several years. You, you think about what they have inside with Tufele at 310. You know, on the outside with Jackson, freshman 275, and Rector 275. This is a big front. To deal with the likes of Washington and Utah in the Pac-12. Rivers with a flag coming in behind the play at the 32. It would be a first down if it stands. The son of former NFL running back and Fresno State running back Ron Rivers. Personal foul, chop block, offense numbers 52 and 72, 15-yard penalty, replay, second down. It's on the left side of the line, Bull and Muti. Yeah, chop block is a high-low combination block. It is very dangerous. It's been outlawed, and it should be called whenever it happens. That is the way that defensive linemen get hurt. Muti, 52, is... Maybe their best lineman. He shifted inside from the outside this fall. And second and 22 for Fresno State. Pressure from Tufele. And down goes Reyna. Rector got him as we go to Matt Barry in the studio. Yeah, tough run for the SEC today. We saw South Carolina lose and come back fashion to North Carolina, among other defeats. Tennessee against Georgia State. Memphis beat Ole Miss as well earlier on. Third and forever for Reyna. And he's going to dance. Reyna on the move. And he's turned away inside the 30 by Isaac Taylor Stewart. Now what do you do? Well, he gave the team a chance for a short fourth down. Question is whether you go for it now or try a field goal. But yeah, he's starting to get comfortable and is up to the speed of the game. It's just football now. Brandon Peely is down, the junior lineman. Gain of 21 will come back after this. Welcome back to ESPN College Football presented by Geico. 21-yard gain for Jorge Reyna, who got Fresno State into field goal range, trailing by 14 to USC. And there is Brandon Peely, one of two defensive linemen for USC, escorted off the field. I like this decision by Jeff Tedford. If you can get a field goal, it's a good series for your quarterback after an opening bad series, and you've shown some momentum. Blake Cusick, the senior, will hold. It is the first FBS kick for Cesar Silva, the transfer from the College of San Mateo. From 45 for Silva. And it does slide through, so Fresno State is on the board. 
Hey, coming up on Monday, number nine Notre Dame against Louisville. Scott Satterfield's debut for the Louisville Cardinals, the former Appalachian State head coach. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific from Cardinal Stadium on ESPN and the ESPN app. Certainly USC will be watching that game. USC fans will with Notre Dame winning three of the last four Wait in this series. Wait. Aren't we all watching on Monday? I mean, it's the holiday. What else do we have to do, right? Well, we're watching for sport. They're watching oh. because it's it's all business. It's all business. I got you. USC, I got Notre you. Dame. I, I got you. I got you. I think I just mansplained Pac-12 <laughs> football to you. <laughs> So, USC. Please reset the game clock to 3:31. USC up 14 to three. We just lost five seconds on our season. Uh, but look, this this, this USC offense and Graham Harrell running the air raid. We saw a couple weeks ago when we met with the players, and then the last couple of days, there is sky high belief in their hearts. Look, these guys are excited about this offense. It is simple for them. It's no longer trying to memorize a huge playbook. It is allowing them to play freely, do their thing, and just relax and have fun. And they, they love that. Right now, the challenge is to Fresno State defensively. They need to adjust. What they've done against the opening script of USC hasn't been good enough. JT Daniels has been letter perfect so far as Jones has the return from the four. Jones tripped up to the 31. Matt Perry in the studio, what you got? Look, he was made for this, right? He's the son of a coach. He's wanted this job for a long time, and little Nix does it. Nix has been going to Auburn games since he was six or seven years old. He remembers plays from when he was seven or eight years old. Like photographically, he remembers those plays, and that's a tough beat for the Pac-12 tonight. Daniels doubling back, and he unloads. Nearly intercepted. Jaron Bryant stepped in front and had a lot of green grass ahead. We talked about adjustments for Fresno State. Now we, we, we have them on that opening play of this drive, really flying out there to jump on backs out of the backfield and short routes. Instead of laying off, you can see now they're getting a little bit closer to the far side of the field, much closer than they were before. So we'll see how USC adjusts Malapai to about the 35. How do you counter that if you're Graham Harrell? Well, the first thing is Graham Harrell is looking at the box. He's looking at the, the closest area to the line of scrimmage and finding out how many defenders are in there for Fresno State. He sees five. He goes, we can block five with our five, so we're going to run the ball, which is what you saw there. That's fine by Fresno State. They'd rather have USC run than throw. Fresno State barely got two off the field. This is a deep ball, middle of the field, and caught by St. Brown. There's a marker down on the play. He's all the way to the 22. But the flag is in the offensive backfield. What a great throw by Daniels. He had St. Brown out there, and he just let him go run underneath it. Personal foul. Hands to the face. Offense, number 75. Third down. That's Elijah Tucker, and he's an interesting case because switching to the air raid has really helped him. It's allowed him to get on the field and play and show his talent. Last year as a youngster, the old playbook, a little bit too much for him. But watch him, right side of your screen, right to the face, helmet comes off. When you knock the helmet off, you're going to get flagged for that. But with Vera Tucker, we're talking about a 30 play playbook, and you hear it so much in college football nowadays, simplifying it for the offensive players. Is, that was anything but simple. It's the United Nations out there. <laughs> what I find fascinating is that we're beginning to see the NFL change, and the NFL change and say, you know what? Offside with contact, defense. 
Number 98, five-yard penalty, still third down. Instead of drafting a quarterback and making him learn a pro-style offense, the NFL is now saying we're going to draft the quarterback and we're going to bring his offense to the NFL, which is what you have with Cliff Kingsbury at Arizona with Kyler Murray. Yeah, we're not only going to bring his offense, we're going to take the coach <laughs> yeah. from this very specific school yes. where he was the coordinator for all of uh, four and a half weeks, Cliff Kingsbury. So they went and got one of his disciples in Graham Harrell. Third and 16 for JT Daniels. With the crossing route, which we'll see a lot of, Bonds is turned aside by Evan Williams, the nickel, and it's fourth down. See, now we're off the script. USC has gone through their first 15 scripted plays. Fresno State said, hey, they had to hang on and get through that. They didn't do a good job of it. They gave up 14 points, but they get a stop here. Now they have a sense of just how close they have to play and how they have to tackle against this air raid offense when they're throwing the ball. We'll see how USC reacts to that next drive. The Aussie punter Griffiths for Rivers who has enough room. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear recognizing those who strive to rise above the rest. Goodyear more at driven. That blimpworthy is not the only yellow on the screen. There's another marker down. Mm. Uh, haven't we had enough of those already? It's week one. Well, yeah. Like That's, I said. Yeah. You, you, special teams. Holding. Return team number 41. Ten yard penalty. First down. You get special teams issues week one. You have tackling issues week one. And games tend to be slower because of that not that clean no and that, that's okay for Fresno State if it's USC doing it that's the kind of break that the Bulldogs might need tonight against this higher octane offense at least so far Jorge Reyna back out after throwing all of 12 passes last year, this handoff for Rivers gets not much, and we go to Matt Berry in the studio. You know, Oregon controlled that game almost the entire evening. And Auburn comes back. That's a that's a saving win for the SEC. The Pac-12 narrative, the question about the ability to knock off big SEC teams, is still going to be out there. Auburn's done it now two years in a row after the Washington game last year, and then Oregon this year. Ball's loose again. Popped up in the air, and USC's on top of it. Nick Figueroa pulls it out of the pile. Turnovers were a problem the other way last year for USC. They've created two tonight. They were number 124 last season in takeaways. It's a point of emphasis this year. They've gone to ripping the ball out. My question is, was Rivers down before the ball was ripped out? Right knee. Is the right knee down? Right knee looks down. The ball looks like it's in his arm, left hand around it, and now it's ripped out. William of a fumble and recovery by the defense. But again, can you see both at the same time, the ball and the knee like the touchdown earlier? Well, I did. I, I, I just saw it. Sure. I saw left knee down. I saw left hand around the ball and then the rip afterwards. So to me, that's indisputable. But we'll, we'll see what the other guys who have better vision than I do think. But I, to me, that was not a fumble because that knee is down. And if we get another look at it, this is not the angle where you will see all of it. There's that... Knee down. But you're guessing at the ball in well, that scenario. Yeah. I know. I, the, the first look. Here's the look. Knees down. Yeah, ball there is. is there. Left hand is over the ball. And the rip comes after that. There it is. You sold me. Thank you. Your Honor, would I, I'd like to have a couple of more moments to confer with my client after having presented that compelling argument. 
you didn't ask for it before, <laughs> so you do not get that extra minute for rebuttal. Yeah. And I already agreed with you. And I think that is indisputable video evidence. I, I agree with you, and, and the question is, does it meet the standard of the replay officials as they talk it over with our Pac-12 crew and Mike McCabe? Well, yeah, you never know, because I saw a call in the Stanford-Northwestern game today, oh. a targeting call that was completely awful. After review, it was determined that the runner's knee was down prior to the ball becoming loose. The ball be placed at the 33-yard line. Third down. You can be my lawyer any day. Well, that, well, that play in the Stanford Northwestern game, quarterback K.J. Costello was going down, giving himself up. He was a defenseless player. He got hit with a forearm in the head by a tackle who came flying in. They called the personal foul. They did not call targeting. Costello was knocked out and out of the game the rest of the way and replays after replays, and even the Fox rules expert, Dean Blandino, said this has got to be two penalties assessed on the play, a dead ball and a live ball, but they completely missed it, a Big Ten crew. In a year when replay can stop the game and, they and didn't. add targeting yeah. from in the booth. But our guys have gotten it right so far here on replay. Yes, they have. Very well done, and that injury may have ramifications for next week right here as Stanford visits USC a week from today. Polk at the running back on third and two, and Reyna is under siege. Got away again. Reyna downfield, there was some contact, and it's incomplete. Not the best decision. Once he got away, he had enough room to run for the first down. I, I think Reyna is still getting his feet underneath him. He felt rushed there. He took the shot down the field. Yeah, you see him get on the bike to get loose. You know, he took a hit earlier. He went right to the bike. What does that tell you, if anything? That something's a little tight on him. He's trying to loosen up. Maybe that's why he didn't run for the first down. Maybe. In that case, it would have been a good decision. Cusick to Vaughn's. <laughs> Nearly got there on Cusick. And a fair catch at the 20. Matt Barry, what do you have? Hey, Texas LSU, Matt alluded to it, Texas LSU next week, the revamped LSU offense, they're running the spread. We got USC running air raid, LSU's running spread. Uh, what, what's happened to Lendale White and Leonard Fournette? What are we doing here? We, we got all our major blue bloods, Oklahoma, Alabama, USC, getting away from pro style and going with air raid type offenses, spread offenses. St. Brown. The worldly sophomore out of bounds short of the 30-yard line. Don't get bored. The words of Graham Harrell, their offensive coordinator. When counseling JT Daniels, learning this air raid, this tons and tons of underneath throws, little gains. Eventually one of these receivers will break a tackle and, and take it the distance. You get the feeling, talking to JT Daniels, how buttoned up he is with preparation. He has taken that to heart, what you're saying, Q. He's been very accurate. Malapai steps through one and has a first down across the 40, gain of 16. And Malapai is 220 pounds, and Gaston, the sophomore corner, came up to, to try and tackle him. There's a flag down. Late at the 45. Yeah, Gaston had no shot at Malapai. It looked like he was running through a tire maze in basic training. <laughs> How good are a rip a lip reader are you? Not that good. Now his mic's on. There's no foul on the play for unsportsmanlike conduct. The contact was legal. So nothing there against Gaston. So if you're Fresno State defensively, you, you want to dare USC to run, but you don't want to play so far off that it's easy for them to throw. We'll see if in the second quarter that strategy comes in for them. 
We called it surgical. JT Daniels, 15 for 17. We showed you the belt he's wearing. It says Dominator. He's pretty close to that. Terrific first quarter. JT Daniels, who won the quarterback competition this offseason for USC. We asked him, hey, what did you think of a quarterback competition? He said, my boss said there's a quarterback competition. It's above my pay grade. I went out and won it, and he did. Stephen Carr has a couple of scores. He is back and healthy, and he's got a first down game that sets up second and medium. Didn't you find Daniels to be just much more mature and I, I guess that's kind of what college is all about right you know you, you kind of grow up a bit when you're in college well you saw the sense of humor really come out we asked him what's different about you this year that you're open more you're talking more he said I shaved my mustache <laughs> he's at 88 percent 15 for 17 he unloads down the middle and a jumping grab for a first down from Tyler Vaughn. Helps to have that guy climbing the ladder for you. Yeah, and, and Gaston was right there, the cornerback, the youngster that they've been working on. But just watch the way Vaughn goes up after this ball. They were high school teammates, and Vaughn beats his old buddy Gaston for a gain of 28. To the outside one more time for Pittman. It's an embarrassment of riches, and Graham Harrell said that coming from North Texas. He said, we didn't have guys like this right, in right. Denton. Yeah. Well, North Texas State, yeah. USC has, they got some dudes, man. Now, the problem down here is that you're almost forced to play some man coverage, and you can't cover three talented guys down here that way. Malapai doubling back and a third down coming up for USC. Fresno State allowed 44 points in the first quarter all of last year. They coughed up 14 in the first 15 minutes this season. Now I want you to be aware of number 83. Josh follow he is a big tight end in the slot now right there he, he's a guy he can go up and get the ball tip ball batted around and incomplete that was Justin Rice who got his hands up again that's the second one he's popped in the air now follow is in the game for a reason and look at this you think maybe he's open yeah, he thinks he's open. I think he's open. He never got a never got a look. You think he might tell JT that he was open? He might mention that when they reconvene on the sideline. He might mention that to the offensive coordinator, Graham Harrell, also. Chase McGrath from 38 for USC and back from the knee tear off the ligament. He sticks it 17 to three for Clay Helton. USC's opener has gone well for the Trojans, 17 to three on a couple of Stephen Carr touchdowns. And we take you from plan to play brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. Yeah, lots of talented receivers and JT Daniels has been spreading the wealth. Vaughn's five catches, St. Brown three, Pittman three, and even Carr has a couple and a TD in the process. So in this new air raid offense, it's been all that has been cracked up to be so far for the USC Trojans. 15 first quarter completions for JT Daniels to those guys. He is already 22 only completion shy of his high from last season against Notre Dame when they kind of kicked the tires on the air raid before Graham Harrell got here. Wheatfall has some space. Past the 35. Stadhouse, the kicker with the tackle. This season, Taco Bell is celebrating student sections and passionate fans like the USC Trojans by awarding the best student section of the year. You don't have to spell well to win. Go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see if your team made this week's rankings and to see how your school competes. Uh, where is the, where's the G go? Is there a G? They're missing. <laughs> 
I mean, is he in the bathroom? Like, you can't leave no. if you're part of the fight on. <laughs> Send somebody else to go get the hot dog. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know everybody's oh, a semifinalist, but, like, that's that might be a disqualifier. Reyna, deep ball, down the middle and nearly intercepted. USC's been playing defense, Jason, for the last five or so minutes without Jay Tufele, defensive lineman who came off in that first quarter with a, a right hand injury. It looked to be a cut, and he's been in the medical tent getting attention to that right hand since. Uh, Brandon Peely also came off early in that first quarter. He is back healthy and on the field. Well, Q, Tufele may be their best defensive player. He really creates havoc inside, and that play where he hurt his hand, he was making a big play in the backfield. We were talking to the offensive coordinator, Ryan Grubb, for Fresno State, and he said Tufele and Rector are the two guys that stand out on tape. Rivers gave some ground to get a couple of yards, and it's third down and long for Jorge Reyna, the young man from Downey, California, just southeast of here. Well, and this is a tough situation for him because it's third and long, and Clancy Pendergast, the defensive coordinator for USC, is a very aggressive guy. Not, not a friend to young quarterbacks or inexperienced quarterbacks. He'll probably heat him up here and probably make sure that he's got the tight end uh, Rice single, doubled or so, but paying attention to him, not giving him an outlet. Then the slot on the right side of the formation, top of your screen. Reyna under pressure, climbing the pocket again off the pump fake. He was hunting that marker, and he's dropped by Elijah Griffin. It's going to be fourth down and two for Fresno State. Yeah, nobody open. He's taken a lot of hits. Even with four rushing, USC is putting enough pressure on Reyna so that Pendergast doesn't feel the need to go to the pressure, bringing five number or six. six. For USC is now wearing number 98. Heard the announcement that uh, Pittman has flipped jerseys. We had, if you missed it earlier, two number sevens on the opening kickoff for USC, leading to a penalty and a re-kick. So Jersey Gate has come to a close. And USC will start inside its own 10. Not one you want to catch. We've seen a lot of that yeah. week one. Saw in the North Carolina, South Carolina game. USC backed up when we come back. ESPN College Football, brought to you by E-Trade, the original place to invest online. This is our monitor. This is where we look at our picture, what's down in the truck they're looking at. Uh, we get overhead. We were listening to the network director. He's telling us where to position the ship. We get the right sun angle. Um, we can hover the ship for however long we need to get uh, the best shot. Evidently, the Goodyear blimp also flies with only one pilot, which is good news considering we were talking to one of them. <laughs> that was Taylor flying the plane. Q's the aeronautics expert on this crew, right? Like, he's the one that goes up in the Blue Angels and all that stuff? Yep. yep. So all I know is that it's a cool look. Malapai off the swing pass. So you got Graham Harrell running the air raid here because Cliff Kingsbury left for the Arizona Cardinals. And... Clay Helton knew that he needed to change something. As we said, he kicked the tires on the air raid in the Notre Dame game at the end of last year. And Graham Harrell shows up having set eight NCAA records as a quarterback, Texas Tech. He was with Mike Leach in 2014. And so there's this sheer confidence from the outside, from the receivers, that they believe in this guy who comes from North Texas. This offense is about space and getting the ball to your premier athletes quickly and letting them do their thing. Three receivers on one side and a single receiver on the other. A lot of flood routes forcing you to tackle in space. Down the middle, that's incomplete. A drop from Tyler Vaughn to a high pointed one earlier and it's a three and out for USC. This is the best series for their Fresno State defense. You got USC backed up. Now USC helped them with the drop, but you got them backed up. Now you get a chance to get the ball back and give Reyna really good field position for Fresno State, which he really hasn't had so far tonight. 
Yeah, you could argue this is the first time Fresno State has been able to lean forward, kind of lean into the turn and have some command of this game instead of backpedaling. Rivers on the approach, and this is going to be grand field position as long as he hangs out of the ball, which he does. Hey, next Saturday, a tremendous college football doubleheader on ABC, 3.30 Eastern time. Kellen Mond, who looked so good the other night against number one Clemson, which took the hammer to Georgia Tech, and then 7.30 Eastern, LSU and Texas, a couple of top ten teams. That's a doubleheader Saturday on ABC. Both came streaming live on the ESPN app. Well, that'll work. Those are, that's a pretty good day. Jimbo Fisher was so effusive about Kellen Mond and his learning of that offense for Texas A&M. And I don't think there are many Seminole fans that want to hear positive things about Jimbo Fisher after the loss they took upon his departure. As Reyna keeps it himself. Rice is out in front, his tight end, and it's a first down run for Reyna, the local kid. A little something else to get him settled, get him going and using his legs and trying to open things up for him. A little misdirection. Now this is the sort of thing that Fresno State needs. A little balance in their attack, but at some point Reyna's going to have to complete something down the field. Rivers is dropped. Drake Jackson, the dynamic freshman. Yeah, he's from Corona Centennial High School. He left high school early to get the spring practice. He is a big body defensive end. Clancy Pendergast told us he's been searching for a big 270 pound, 275 pound guy he could play at the defensive end spot. And lo and behold, they found Jackson which allows Rector to have a guy he feels a partnership with on the other side instead of moving from linebacker to defensive line as you see to Fele back in the game and a good side for USC. Play action there's Rector behind the play and Reyna is tackled right at the 34 and a half. Yeah, he, that defensive line is big athletic and they're putting pressure on Reyna. And, and he's probably making that decision a little bit too late. He's holding the ball a little bit long, waiting for someone to come on. He's got to decide to go a little sooner if he's going to run. He's taken a ton of hits already. You can yep. see his jersey and his pants are all green. He spent some time on the bike on the sideline. It'll be interesting to see what he looks like in the third and fourth quarter. A lot of emotion dripping off of him pregame. Being from around here is Reyna on third down and 10. Launches deep down the middle and caught touchdown. Darion Grimm reels it in for the Fresno State score. Yeah, Jason, we talked about him having to make a throw down the field. Where USC is weak defensively is on the back end. His dad knows it. His dad is pumped and he's like, yep, he settled down. We're right back in this thing. 50 family members. He bought 50 additional tickets for this game. And there you have Grimm right down the middle. That one goes for 34 after the first seven passes went for 26 yards for Jorge Reyna. You saw the fist pump. You see some assuredness in his eyes as Grimm pulls in the score. Fresno State on the move in a seven-point game. Welcome back to ESPN College Football presented by Geico. The short field pays off in a jackpot for a Jorge Reyna. 17-10 USC over Fresno State and the Trojans will get the ball. After the Fresno State score off three plays in 47 yards. Jones back to receive and this to the sideline not at all what Fresno State wanted. Free kick out of bounds. Back to the Taking touchdown. Two. Yeah if you watch the, the left side of your line. screen here you'll see touchdown. that USC is basically playing each of these guys with about a quarter of the field back there and then they have Grimm run right between them which is the way you attack quarters coverage. 
neither defender makes a decision about what to do, and then Grimm plays the ball in the air way better than anybody back there. He goes up and he gets it, and all of a sudden, the game that was running away from Fresno State is now right back where they need it, as you see the numbers on Reyna. That last drive, 101, a big 34-yard touchdown pass. Eerily similar to that game oh. from earlier in Tallahassee with Boise State's comeback. Yeah, it? very similar. Daniels. And look at the close by Gaston against his former high school teammate Tyler Vaughn. We talked about the opening 15 plays. That's the script for USC. Fresno State struggled with that. Once they got off script and they had been manhandled for those first 15 plays, Fresno State adjusted. They moved up closer for the short routes, and they started reading the quarterback's eyes and driving on the ball. So when does the counter come? Carr out of the backfield, had two guys waiting for him, and still ends up with a first down based on the far side official. And now as he's walking it off, it looks like he's going to mark it a little bit short. Let's see. player down as well it is Walker the middle linebacker for Fresno State and they cannot afford to lose that first team all Mountain West kid from Sacramento no it's the second time he's been down tonight he moved from the outside linebacker spot where he was great at putting pressure on the quarterback he's now an inside guy and he's got the quickness and the speed to go sideline to sideline he runs around linemen who come out to block him they really can't afford to lose him. He's a dynamic player for them. Cramp to his right calf, gentlemen. Early. And it's not really hot out here anymore. It was earlier today. It was approaching the uh, 90s. But when this game started, temperature was in the, in the 70s. Interesting to see a guy cramp up in the first half. Yeah, if you haven't had enough fluids, you know, prior to that cue, when it was hot, you know, it can still get you later. And it's hard to catch up once you start getting cramps. It, they, they just don't seem to go away. You know, Jeff Tedford gets a lot of respect for his offensive prowess, but this was a tremendous defensive team for Fresno State last year. Malapai has a first down, moving the sticks to the 47. Yeah, I think when you talk about the adjustment for USC offensively, I think, I think they're going to have to start running it a little bit more because Fresno State is inviting them to do that by only having four or five guys in the box near the line of scrimmage and really overplaying the short passes. Play action for Daniels. And Vaughn steps in front to make the grab. He beat Gaston one more time. They are together intertwined. Yeah, and they're really working on on Gaston. He plays this pretty well, but that's a very well-thrown ball by Daniels. And then a tremendous catch out there by Vaughn's high pointing that thing. You see the uh, ballet history of Tyler Vaughn's there. He took a ballet class in high school. A little soft shoe for a first down. Daniel Scrambler. And he's twisted around and down by Levell Tatum, the third. The nephew of Jack Tatum, the hard hitter for the Raiders. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, from that Tatum family. Man, he certainly made a reputation as an Oakland Raider with big hits. So that's the assumption with anyone related to him, right? Yeah, part of the immaculate reception as well, Jack Tatum. Malapaya carving inside the 20. Oh, look at him truck inside the 10. Mosby went for a ride. You know, we talked about the rushing game. When you only have five guys in the box or four, you're daring USC to run the ball. You're giving those offensive guards a straight line to get on your linebackers. Watch 75 there. He's got a good hold on Tatum. But when you get big linemen on linebackers, it gives a lot of room for your running backs to make plays like like that one by Malapai. You know, Mosby's the guy down and injured. He was a couple yards behind the play and pursued hard to get Malapai down on the ground. Mosby coming out now. Ooh. 
Longest run for either team on that carry for Malapai. See Walker is back in the game for Fresno State now. Quint mentioned cramps and he seems to be over that at least temporarily. Fade. It is caught. Was he in bounds? No, the official threw his hat saying he went out of bounds and then came back in. on the field as the player stepped out of bounds. The role to play is an incomplete pass. The only question would have been was he forced out of bounds? Now you see he stepped out by a good margin there. And never reestablished. Never reestablished before catching that ball. Good job by Bryant, the corner over there, not giving him enough room to stay inbounds. Juggle off the snap. That's picked off. Justin Rice steps in front. It was shaky from the start, and Fresno State rips it. Well, and Daniels never saw Rice. Rice didn't really have to move. They're overplaying the short passes, and that's the discussion over there with Clay Helton. But Rice was positioned right there in front of what would be the slant. And Daniels just doesn't see him, throws it right to him. He's had so many open holes underneath, he just assumed that Rice would move out of the way. Rice stood there and saw Pittman coming in and never got out of the way. He stood there and it was right to him. That is a huge turnover on a drive in which SC was rolling right back down the field. Well, Justin and Jared Rice have this great family rivalry where one does something good and they call their dad and they say, hey, guess what? I just topped my brother. Now, look, you got the tight end in Jared Rice who has a couple of catches, but Justin has done the best work so far stopping the USC drive cold. Reyna off a block from the other Rice. It's a gain of nine. Justin Rice came to Fresno as a running back, spent a year there. Then they moved him to safety, then down to linebacker. Burt Watts, the defensive coordinator, said he can play all three positions. And what he likes about him the most is that he, he, can, he reads offenses because he was an offensive player. And he can diagnose and determine what's going to go on before the snap. It's a perfect example of that on the interception. In fact, both Rice brothers moved positions yep. at the behest of Jeff Tedford. See, Reyna has taken a number of hits. He's been a huge part of the rushing attack. A lot of quarterback design runs for him tonight. I'm not sure he can survive the game with a whole, whole lot of hits like this. Well, that is a big USC defensive line with some speed to go along with it. Play clock down to 10. At one, Reyna accepts the ball. And incomplete. He had to wrap it around a flying defensive lineman second down. You know, we, we've talked about the USC front and to Fele 78 and Jackson 99 have been huge and this is the kind of down second and ten where those guys are going to really try and get after Reyna and, and Jackson even though he's 275 on that edge he's quick he can bring some pressure off the edge true freshman knows how to pass rush what would your play call be then knowing that protect my quarterback see what they do second down they send out five in the pattern, and Rivers never could get two hands on it. Yeah, well, you make that throw right where you need it so it's easy for Rivers. That's a huge play for you. And Reyna knows it. Take a little bit off, let, Reina, let Rivers catch it, and you get a first down right there. So he's still a little bit off with some of his throws. Great throw for the touchdown, comes back on the touch pass, and he misses that one here. Coliseum littered with the Reina family. Heart rate flying at points. Third down for Reina. Pressure. Reina is knocked down. Way back there inside the 20. 
Jackson was in there, Rector was in there, and pull him out too. Well, you knew it was coming. You knew Pendergast was going to dial up pressure on the young quarterback. They overload the left side. They can't pick it up. Not enough blockers. They had four receivers on, on pattern there. And nothing Raina could do but protect the football and take the sack. 16 is down number 98. When both DNs get there eventually, you're not going to do a whole bunch. <laughs> oh, no. The quarterback. Oh, that was, that was an overwhelming pass rush from the left side. Music rolling out. Giving the coverage team a chance to get downfield. And he pops it inside the 25. Down to the 20. Nice work by Cusick. USC gets it back when we come back after a punt of 60. Bo Nix, Hank Bachmeyer at all with big wins either at neutral sites, on the road, transfer quarterbacks, a big story as well as here's Daniels who graduated early to find his way to USC and he was under enough pressure to send it out of there. Second down for a USC team that was five and seven last year. Very effective use of pressure on first down by Fresno State. This is one of the few times they brought the no blitz. Foul for intentional grounding. And Daniels just threw it away. Now they can actually play some coverage, but right now they're a little too deep. They're going to have to roll up. Malapai slicing for a first down. So USC, we talked about it, five and seven last year. Their first losing season since the year 2000, Paul Hackett's final season here at Troy. And people are starting to ask the question, even in the fan base, are we moving the right direction? So you have the major change offensively, and this batted around. But it's a, a very important offense right now for USC as Clay Helton turned to Graham Harrell. Yeah, it was a dangerous throw there, by the way, by Daniels. But if you think about the Oregon loss to Auburn today and the narrative that's been out there about the Pac-12 not being relevant for the playoff. A lot more pressure on USC for this offense to be good, for USC to be better because when USC is good, the national view is that the Pac-12 is pretty good. 11 national titles will get you there, certainly. And, and we asked Clay Helton, how do you feel about the pressure? How do you turn all that social media off? And he said, well, you know, I, I grew up the son of a coach and all this stuff. And we said, but you're a human. And he said, partly. <laughs> so evidently, when you become a college football coach, you lose a little humanity. Yeah, well, he's worried about his offense because after that, the first two drives with touchdowns, they've gone the next four without much. A field goal, but punt, punt, and a pick. And now they're facing a third and long. Trips at the bottom. Daniels looks that way. And he's got a first down for Tyler Boss. Plenty of time. And that's what allowed Daniels to find Bonds. Only four rushing. USC picked it up. Bonds had plenty of time to find the open zone in that secondary. Fresno stunted on the inside. It was nice communication by USC's offensive line. Should be an improved unit for USC. Carr dodges outside. He got by Walker initially, and the offensive line changes, Rod, in this air raid offense. Yeah, I mean, you know, when, when you think about pressuring USC, they only have three pass protections. It's really simple. And that's why most teams, when they face an air raid, they try to stunt, twist their defensive linemen to confuse them. Fresno State hasn't been able to do much of that yet. Nearly got a hand on him. Carr to the flank and a first down. And Fresno State has tried to bring pressure on first down to create second and long, but they've had trouble on second down when they've tried to go to coverage. USC looks out there and they see only four or five guys near the line of scrimmage, and they've been able to run against that and pick up a lot of yardage on second down. The people watching this might say, look, 
you know, they're only running 30 plays. How can you gouge people with 30 plays in your playbook? <laughs> practice, practice, practice. JT Daniels told us they've run every play at least a thousand times. Yeah, they're trying to get really, really good at just a couple of things. But let, let's not get confused. This is not the true air raid. It's sort of like, you know, beer and light beer. This is air raid Game light. Clock operator, please reset the play clock to 40 seconds. Only Mike Leach runs the true air raid at Washington State. Hey, by the way, aerial coverage provided by Goodyear from end zone to end zone. Goodyear more driven. Mike Leach will tell you that. Yes. As well. Because he says everyone else has gone to kind of a 50-50 run pass thing, and that's not what the air raid is about. The air raid is just really stressing pass first, spread the field, pressure people with the threat of the deep throw, the vertical routes, the crossing routes. And everyone who's adopted the air raid and been successful lately has gone with a 50-50 hybrid. And then everyone is a lot of folks as Daniels to Vaughn's at the sideline, and he has been a major factor. It's a first down. JT Daniels, one of those guys who ran the air raid his sophomore year in high school, he ran the air raid and called his own plays. So this is relatively normal for him. Car drilled by Mosby. Clock not an issue here. USC has three timeouts, just used one. First charge timeout. USC, this is a 30 second timeout. So look, USC goes off to this rip-roaring start, right? They're up big, we saw it earlier. Uh, one quarter, two quarters does not make opening weekend. South Carolina game dealt with it. Florida State dealt with it. Mm -hmm. We saw Florida State jump out on Boise State, and Boise State came back and they won that game. In our game here, we saw USC look like world beaters in the first quarter, and Fresno State talked about having to hang in there, and now it's 17-10. And if they can get out of this drive here with no more than a field goal, I think Fresno State will tell you, look, we got through the first half kind of the way we wanted to, and we'll be better in the second half. USC needs a touchdown here to remind Fresno State, you really haven't caught up with us in this first half. The Fresno State team that was very good in the third quarter defensively last year, USC blew a number of double-figure leads last season. Daniels for Vaughn's again, curling and dropped by Gaston. Great tackle, great open field tackle by Gaston. As this game goes on, Fresno State gets a little bit better at these open field tackles against good receivers. Sea legs. Oh yeah, figuring it out. All happens week one, all those mistakes. Pressure coming. Rice is there. He's got a pick and he's got a major sack. He was down, no fumble, but Fresno State topples Troy with 30 seconds to go in the second quarter. And Rice is down. Yeah, it's a blitz. They bring Rice up the middle along with the free safety free, and USC doesn't pick it up. Now, was he down before that ball came out? He doesn't have control of that, but that right leg looks like it's down already before it comes out. Looked like knee first and then let, yeah. yeah. Knees down and ball is out. That's a good call on the field by this Pac-12 officiating crew. See how bang bang of a play that is too. Daniels is down and remember the guy who won the backup spot is a true freshman. Keaton, Keaton Slovis. Slovis. Yep. So Slovis, the freshman out of Scottsdale, wins the backup job. Jack Sears, who was a close friend of JT Daniels, put his name in the transfer portal. And so Daniels is down. Now remember, they still have Matt Fink on the roster also. He lost out in the battle as well, but he is the third quarterback. The previous play is under review. We certainly hope that JT Daniels is okay. They're going to see if there was a clear recovery 
in the ensuing action. And that's one thing they can look at. The fumble is another thing. So they'd have to look at both, right? They'd have to see Correct. if there's a fumble. And then they'd see clear recovery as a possibility. So they'll look at both. They're looking at JT Daniels, who had such a sterling first quarter. A young man who's loved football since the age of five. You get the feeling he was built for a position like this, and Daniels is down. Take a look at what might have happened. Yeah, they're clearly checking his right knee. Here's the play. Look at the right leg. And it seems like it started to buckle even before he got hit. So Daniels is going to have to get helped off. 25 for 34 for 215 yards for JT Daniels. And you see his teammates rushing out to meet him. Well, and if you're USC, if you're part of Trojan Nation, you're looking at a game that in the first quarter looked like it was going to be over quickly. Now it's 17-10. You've lost your starter. After review, it was determined that the quarterback lost control of the football prior to his knee going down. The ball is recovered by Fresno State. It'll be first wow. down Fresno State to 23 yard line. It wow. compounds for USC. Daniels being helped off. Clear recovery for Fresno State. So no potential points at all for USC out of this. This game, it, it couldn't have gotten any worse. Fresno State will get the second half kickoff as well. My initial view of that, I, I thought his leg was down before he lost control. So apparently as they looked further back, they felt the ball was coming out even before his uh, right leg went down. Wow. Fresh the ball is recovered on the 29 yard line. So first the ball down. goes to the 29 for a Fresno State first down. Okay, you got three timeouts. You gonna mess around no, with throwing the ball no, here? No, no. I Jeff Tedford probably I, I'm thinking he wants to go in at halftime and go, we're in a good spot here. We'll get the ball at a halftime as you mentioned. Reyna is looking to throw. He's scanning and now Rivers ends up out of bounds. 19 seconds. You kind of feel like you're doing ballet on the edge of the cliff here. Well you're in a good spot if you're Fresno State. You weathered the storm. You're getting the ball to start the third quarter. USC is probably panicking a little bit now because it looks like coming out the second half they'll have a true freshman quarterback who hasn't played at this level yet. Eighteen seconds. For Fresno State the defending Mountain West champions. Reyna guns it to the sideline and he's got Zane Pope one of 95 California natives on this roster. I'll tell you what this shows you how much confidence and 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 trust Tedford has in Reyna not to turn the ball over here. A little moxie in Fresno State doing this too. A little guts in making this decision. Reyna was cavalier with the ball and he goes down. Houston with the stop and now they're going to go ahead and call the timeout. I mean <laughs> after such fringy moments. First charge timeout. Fresno State. What does this tell this you about Jeff Tedford timeout. and his belief in his guys. Well we said at the top this is not a game in which you've got David taking on Goliath. These are champs out of the Mountain West Conference from last year. They've won 22 games over the last two years. They feel physically they measure up with USC. They feel they can go toe to toe. So now Tedford is playing it that way with a few seconds to go. He wants to be in position to take a shot at the end zone. So if we get anything other than you know a Hail Mary here I'll be shocked after the way they came out here and threw the ball around with what 29 seconds to go here and a guy playing in his first game in the L.A. Coliseum coming home with family and friends and everything. There's a lot of scrappy in Fresno State. You think about the cars and where they got them. Jeff Tedford was under recruited when yep. he went to play quarterback there in the 80s. And so huh. Reyna now takes a knee. They had enough. <laughs> they were scrappy enough. That's what we said back at 29 seconds. Take a knee and go in. 17 <laughs> 10 at halftime into the studio for our halftime report.
Welcome back to ESPN College Football presented by GEICO. Separated by just a couple hours and seven points right now. Fresno State and USC. Trojans came out firing. Fresno State responded well. And we have a dandy of a second half coming up. Oh, yeah. And you think about the first half. And USC with their air raid offense. It was on fire when you started with it. I mean, JT Daniels really came out firing. He was great in the first quarter, and he had two touchdown drives, the first two drives, short passes like this, and he also completed one down the field. But after that great start, this happened. Yeah, he gets hit, loses the ball, so they not only turn it over, they lose their quarterback. JT Daniels, who had an outstanding first half, carted off. So Keaton Slovis takes over. Quint Kesnick asked Clay Helton about the new quarterback. What's he done well during fall camp? Uh, consistency and just oh, finding the open players. Um, and that's all we're going to do. Tell them in there, don't be Superman. Find the one-on-ones and let the playmakers play. Quint, thank you. There is Keaton Slovis, who at one point during camp back in the spring said, Coach, do you mind if I go to prom? <laughs> That's, That's what right. we're dealing with here. Yeah, he, he left high school a semester early to get to spring practice so he could try and compete for the job, and he ended up winning the backup spot, and now he's the guy. I mean, we're going to get Fresno State first here, but the focus is on what Slovis can do. Let's take a look at our Modelo gold standard stats from the first half, and USC's offense was dynamic, but Fresno State's within seven. Yeah, it was a huge start by USC. Fresno State wanted to weather the storm in the first quarter. They did. The defense settled in. Better open field tackling. Better zone coverage by them, even though there were 25 completions by Daniels. And now the offense, after a rocky start by Reyna, has settled down mostly behind Reyna's legs, not the arm. One big touchdown pass by him in the first half. On a West L.A. college, Pasadena High School, it's a jet sweep, an end around for Jalen Cropper, the freshman, to set up second down and short. There's a lot of gutty in this Fresno State team. Well, and I believe at the halftime they were saying we're right where we want to be. We're on the road here. We knew they'd come out hot. We weathered the storm. Now let's go play our game. We're just as physical. We're just as good. We're champs. You know, we know what we're doing. I think they're going to get Rivers more involved. He only had five carries in the first half. Ronnie Rivers, the son of one of the leading receivers all time in Fresno State history, Ron Rivers. This is Ronnie for a first down to Fele, who was injured in the first half with the stop. Yeah, uh, Q can tell you about Tufele. He's seen him up close and personal. Three 310-pounder who just dominates up front. Those are big dudes down there, aren't they, Q? Tufele, Jackson. They, they are. You know, they, they lost their, their best pass rusher, uh, Porter Gustin, from a year ago, uh, who was injured midway through the season. But they, they don't have a true edge pass rusher right now. But they look like they're maybe a little stronger against the run inside. Minute in, second half, Fresno State within seven. After beating two Pac-12 teams last year, Reina discards it incomplete. Yeah, the, the weakness of this USC defense is, you know, we've talked about the, the big guys up front. The weakness is on the back end, in particular the corners. And they're playing four guys in two corner spots tonight at USC. The problem for Fresno State, they haven't had enough time to challenge them. The one time they did, they were able to come up with a touchdown pass. Second down, that's Cropper in motion again. Cropper for a first down, finally tracked down by Rector. Now give some credit to Clancy Pendergast, the defensive coordinator. He came in with the game plan to make sure that Rivers and Rice didn't beat him. And so you see Fresno State going to other guys to make things happen. That's what Pendergast wants. He doesn't want the main guys to hurt him. When you're looking at the tape for Fresno State, they only had three offensive starters back. Cropper is one of the newcomers, the oldest of five in the Cropper family. He got 
Zane Pope, the sophomore who redshirted just a couple of years ago. So a lot of enigmatic guys on the outside for Fresno State. Right. And USC is saying, let's find out if the new guys are up to carrying the load. We know Rivers can do it. He did it against Arizona State in the bowl game for more than 200 total yards of offense. So don't let Rivers do it. Make somebody else do it. This is Rivers squeezing through the car wash for a first down. That's John Houston, who Quint asked Clancy Pendergast, who's your next Cam Smith? And Houston was the guy. Yeah, redshirt senior, veteran guy, knows what he's doing out there, calls the defense. Pendergast has a lot of trust in him. He's a little thin for the position, but he runs extremely well sideline to sideline. Yeah, Q, only 220 pounds inside there. Fake the throw, hand it off instead. And Cam Sutton is down to the 11-yard line. Creative play calling from Tedford and his band, and it's first down. Taking advantage of the USC speed and their ability to pursue. Letting them over-pursue and then come back the other way. Tremendous ball handling by Reyna there. Faking the throw, using his offhand to hand the ball to his receiver and letting him get out there. That's another sign of the we can do this. Yes. From Fresno State. Hoke it the running back. And the ball is on the ground. They take out Rivers and the mesh was no good. It's USC football at the bottom of the pile. It looks like. We have seen today in college football so many teams struggle with the mesh on the zone read. You know, we were talking to Graham Harrell yesterday about why he runs only a couple of running plays. He says, because there are only a few things you can be good at. This stuff takes a lot of practice. This is the first time they've run the zone read tonight with Hokit. And that mesh, they were not on top of it. Hokit tried to hang on to it. And at the last minute, Reyna tried to pull it out. Ball's on the ground. Now, what does USC have in their quarterback position? We'll find out. It was a four-man competition. Keaton Slovis comes in second place. Jack Sears into the transfer portal. JT Daniels injured. So Slovis, his first ever look at an FBS field, comes in the second half. And it's Malapai on the first touch. Now remind me, who coached? Slovis in high school? It was Kurt Warner was his high school quarterbacks coach. So when you have a Hall of Famer around you, you know a little something about high pressure situations, you'd imagine. And you see Graham Harrell says, look, let's ease him into this. Yep. Well, given the field position especially. Good point. Backed up and, and Fresno State's touchdown came on a short field cue in that first half. Malapai trying to stiff arm, and we have a flag. Atkins off the tackle. Let's see what the marker is. I think he got the face mask. I think he got the face mask with his right hand. Personal foul. Face mask. Number 90 defense. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Huge penalty. Oh, he blew up this play. Atkins dominated it, got there. And you saw it was the left hand on the face mask. And there was a grab and twist. It wasn't the incidental yeah. contact, so. Although we've redefined incidental contact in the Pac-12 earlier today. <laughs> You're just not going to let that targeting or non-targeting call in the Stanford game go, huh? Well, you can't. Stanford's here next week. Big game. To the sideline from Slovis, and his first completion goes to Michael Pittman, the reliable senior. And to follow up on that point, if you look ahead the next week, both Stanford and USC look like they will have backup quarterbacks starting that game. Because J.K. Costello got hurt in the Stanford game, and J.T. Daniels got hurt tonight for USC. Stanford ended up getting the win despite that. Will USC do the same? Slovis was a little bit late with the ball maybe. It came loose out of the hands of Vaughns. And let's see, is it Fresno State football? They let it play out. It is Bulldog football. But will it survive review? 
If it does, it's the third USC turnover. Slova's like, what do I have to do? Now he's upright, he tucked it. That is a catch. And Mosby. Oh, you know, look at the thing is, he is on top of a Fresno State player, so he doesn't touch the ground, even though he was not moving forward. His progress had been stopped, but he was on top of a Fresno State player. That's a really good call on the field. This officiating crew on Bang Bang Plays tonight has been right on top of it, and it looks like that will survive replay. Agreed. Now, again, video review comes on every play, but it's their decision to stop it or not, and they're not going to stop this. No need to look. It was pretty clear. Clay Helton has the option to challenge, but he's not going to do it. The booze rained down from the sparkling new Coliseum. And now a whistle before the play, and a flag comes in. False start. False start, False start. offense number 72. Five yard penalty, still first down. First yep. The player on top of another player on the field is a double edged sword because most of the time the offense likes it because your guy can get up and continue to run. I've always been concerned about it because the defense can hit a guy who can't protect himself. But you also have the risk that the ball could come out without the guy really being able to go forward and do anything. When you have the sensation that you might be on the ground as well. Now they'll feed Rivers for a short game. Now Ote Ote with the tackle. The sophomore out of the high school powerhouse Bishop Gorman. How about if you're Fresno State going a little max pro, taking your shot down the field? You haven't been able to attack the corners very often, but when you have, you've had some success. But you just need to protect Reyna to take a shot down the field. His best ball tonight, the touchdown. Yep. 34 yards for Darion Grimm. Screen. Rivers. Banging to the 30 with Drake Jackson on his hip and third down coming up as they get half of it. Look, the Mountain West has worn out the Pac-12 oh. recently. Yes, Colorado State lost to Colorado just last night. Fresno State beat two Pac-12 schools last year. Arizona State and UCLA. It was five in a row until that loss for the Rams yesterday in Denver. Arizona lost to Hawaii to open the season. On that last second, one yard away situation. Poke it back in after the fumble last time. Reyna across the middle to the 29 for Rice, and they're going to be about two yards short. What do you say? Well, if you're Tedford, you made a 45-yard field goal. Right now, I think the momentum has changed. You know, it feels like you've got USC a little bit on the ropes here because they've got the freshman quarterback. They've struggled a little bit. But no, Tedford, and I respect this, he's saying for the long haul, I like where we are. We can go for three. We don't have to take a fourth down chance here. He's saying we can play toe-to-toe. -to -toe. This is not desperation time. But this is a chance, too. It's 46 from a hash mark. Well, but he made a 45-yarder, and it looked like he had plenty to spare. This one? Is good. Time will tell. 17-13. We have a dandy at the Coliseum. You're watching the Pac-12 on ESPN. Beautiful night here in Los Angeles as we take a look at this week's college football rankings brought to you by Chick-fil-A. Alabama had about a half worth for Duke. Uh, Georgia had about a quarter worth from Vanderbilt, and uh, everybody else kind of ran around their competition as well. But uh, Oklahoma-Houston's intriguing, huh? Yeah, can't, can't wait to get a look at that one. But if you were looking for a Pac-12 team in the top ten, you already knew there, there wasn't one in there, and Oregon lost today. That is a tough loss for the league. As Jones on the return for USC, which needs a big one. Jones breaks three. Jones on the gas pedal down the sideline. Touchdown Trojans. He 
was mad, his first one got called back. He had a 61-yarder call back in the first quarter. This is a left return. They seal off everything inside, and there is no way he's going to get caught by the kicker. He's one of the fastest guys on the USC team, and that is the best way to help out a true freshman quarterback score on the special teams. Made fewer cuts than Reggie Bush did against Fresno State <laughs> 14 years ago. That's a good look back. 24-13, that's a massive return for Troy. There has never been a more perfect do more in a jiffy brought to you by Jiffy Lube. Yeah, well, Bayless Jones in a jiffy changes the momentum in, of this game and changes the score with his kickoff return, a kick six here. And he's got the speed to go. This is a young man who considered transferring in the offseason to Alabama. And right now, Trojan Nation is really glad he decided to stick around. Young man who had some things going on at home with his family. Decided, though, that he wanted to stay and finish it out at USC. The first kickoff return for a touchdown for the Trojans since 2016 comes at a huge time with the backup quarterback in. JT Daniels carted off. So Slovis gets seven without touching the football. And here comes Fresno State. Darion Grimm has the only touchdown, and he gets clothesline before the 20-yard line. Hey, Monday, Brian Kelly and number nine Notre Dame takes on Louisville. Scott Satterfield's debut for the Cardinals. He built a group of five powerhouse at Appalachian State. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific from Cardinal Stadium on ESPN and the ESPN app. He was on the sideline for the Armani Edwards App State over Michigan game. No top 25 team wants to hear that today, but we're almost done with week one. And <laughs> ranked teams were relatively unscathed at 22-1. Yeah. and one. So now what does Jorge Reyna have in the tank? He's going to carry himself to the outside. Past the corner, Elijah Griffin at second down coming up. Well, USC has taken away the rushing of Rivers, and the adjustment for Fresno State has been quarterback run with Reyna. And Reyna has taken a lot of punishment. And remember, Rivers is a guy who can carry it 20 plus times a game. Not so tonight. He had 212 yards on the ground in the Las Vegas Bowl last year against Arizona State and bottled up completely tonight. Reyna again darting back inside. He's very close with Houston and Rector combining. Christian Rector finally getting to play that defensive end spot in his senior year. Not a highly thought of recruit, but he's been an important part of this defense. Yeah, absolutely. And that, that's a bigger front by USC. Tougher for Fresno State to run inside. This short yardage sit, sit, uh, play here is not a gimme for that reason. Rivers does have the first down by about a yard. They do pry it free, but the play was blown dead. Forward progress was stopped. It was whistled dead, and Fresno State will keep it. in the field is forward progress. First down. You know, some folks would look out there and go, hey, it's only a half yard, you know, just sneak it inside. The problem is, to Fele, 78, we've talked about him, he's wreaking so much havoc inside, Fresno State understands they can't run in there. They have to go outside. Preseason first team, all Pac-12 defensive linemen. Yeah, he's getting a rest right now. Reyna to Rivers, cutting it back inside. Rivers finds a seam across the 40. He needs more touches. How do you do that? Handoff, well, passing play? If, if you can't run him between the tackles as you normally do, 
You got to get him screened. You got to get him involved in the passing game. But he is too good, too valuable not to get somewhere between 18 and 22 touches a game. Whether you hand it to him or throw it to him, he's got to touch the football. Back-to-back -back plays, we've seen Talanoa Hufanga, who Kim, uh, comes from Corvallis, Oregon, on the stop. An interesting young man, Hufanga, the sophomore of safety, who grew up on a farm among chickens, pigs, and goats, one of which was a pet of his. <laughs> yeah. He said you couldn't get too close. To the uh, to the cows though. Yeah, he he got attached to one of the cows, and then they had burgers, <laughs> and then he no longer got attached to cows anymore. <laughs> Rivers on the run, uh, so he befriended the goat. He has a, yeah. uh, a, a fond memory of his goat named Fiji. Well, he told us the story about the goats. I'd never heard this, but he said he discovered that if if the cows got out, and he wanted to bring them back. They would follow the goat, so all he had to do was take the goat out to the cows, and the cows would follow the goat way back in. <laughs> Truly amazing. It's good herding. They're the Pied Piper of the animal world. <laughs> Third down for Reyna. See the battering he's taken with the discolored jersey for Jorge Reyna in his first Fresno State start. Option play. Rivers gets the edge against Houston, and it's first down. Yeah, I, I like the plan now. They're getting Rivers involved and trying to establish him. Now, when you do that, it'll make Rhea a little bit better in the quarterback run game. But the other thing it creates is another opportunity for Reyna to get one-on-one -on -one coverage outside and to take another shot down the field because his guys have been open when he's had time. They just haven't had time to throw it. What about on first down here? Well, Pendergast tends to bring a little pressure on first down. You got to protect your quarterback. Empty on this first down. Wide second down. And you see how fired up the USC coaches are on the sideline for that incompletion. Well, he's a little more understated, Clancy Pendergast. Some of his assistants were on the field and shouting. He's yeah. been in Super Bowls, right? He's, yeah, he, he's seen it all before. Yeah. Nothing surprises him on the football field. He's got his big old play card. Graham Harrell has a napkin <laughs> for the offense. They meet in the backfield with Rector on Reyna, and it's third down and long. And, and good for Rector. He, he's a guy that is looking to bounce back from last season. Yeah, he was moved around in a lot of positions. Now he's settled in at that left defensive end spot. And he can just focus on that, and they expect a big year out of him. They'd expect something big from him on third down here. Tenth play of the drive and a big one. Heat coming. They do rush six. Reyna goes deep. Oh, incomplete. Pope had two steps. That's the point we've been making. Every time they take the shot down the field, their receivers have beaten the USC secondary. The question has been protection, and on that one, accuracy. They got the protection. You can't USC miss that throw. So instead of the touchdown, it's punt time to Vaughn's. Husick rolling. Vaughn's lets it roll into the end zone. Us uh, USC gets it back. Keaton Slovis will have the reins. The freshman quarterback back out when we return. man who was so self-assured when he came into this game 25 for 34 new offensive system but he's injured late in the first half and here's how it happened you know you hate to see this this is just him having trouble with that right knee as he was engulfed in a sack back there and it's a it's a tough tough deal you think about what is at stake this season for USC all the pressure on them to have a great season 
And now we'll see how much of a part of it he can be. Malapai. Flag down. He's into plus territory. There's a flag at the 33, and it looks like USC is moonwalking. Holding offense number 84. Ten-yard penalty. Replay first down. Every time this game is on the edge of saying bye-bye to Fresno State, USC does something else that causes trouble for itself. They find a way to moonwalk back into a game, you're saying. I, I got you. So you think about their mistakes. They've had three turnovers, two in the red zone. Think about the penalties they had that cost them a touchdown, brought back that 61-yard kickoff return. It, it's been, yeah, two steps forward, a couple steps back. Slow this under duress to Carr. And look, you talked about it earlier. If you're a USC fan watching at home, you're like, we've given away leads like this. I mean, last year, there was enough of them to call it a trend yes. for Clay Helton's team. No doubt. You know, they blew some double-digit leads last season that had Trojan Nation shaking its head. Four of them. Four times. Yeah, that's, that's enough. I mean, a third of the schedule, as this goes to Pittman, and he finds his way to the 31 for a USC first down. I have five and seven for Clay Helton last season. Again, this is off a Rose Bowl and a Cotton Bowl. But five and seven, they hadn't had a losing season like that in 18 years. And then the four games with a 10-plus point lead, they used to just run away from folks in the Matt Liner days in the Reggie Bush era. Speaking of running away, Carr inside the plus 45. The gain of 27 for Carr, who has a couple of scores. A lot of questions about that offensive line last year and coming into this year, but so far they've had the back of the freshman quarterback. Slovis launches, sideline ball, and caught! Vaughn's inside the five! He's gone high for one, he goes underneath, sliding for this one. He found the one-on-one -on -one coverage to the wide field, and he put the ball up and gave his receiver, Vons, a chance. And Vons made the great catch. 150 yards for Vons. Slovis on courts another. And a marker comes in on the route for Pittman. Pittman is six foot four, and he's out there facing the five foot ten Ruffin. Pass interference, defense number 22. The ball facing the two yard line, automatic first down. Wide field, a lot of room. Now, you can get away with that as long as you don't extend your hand. You can bump a little bit and have your elbow on him, but when you extend that arm out, and he'll learn that, Ruffin will learn that. That's I, when you get flagged. I still don't know about it. <laughs> I'm iffy. Tricks of the trade. They'll go to the ground. Malapai. And he's in. Touchdown, USC. This offensive line has been dominant this drive. Wash everyone down and allow Malapai to just find that little seam inside. But it was all set up by that tremendous throw and the better catch by Vaughn's. Keaton Slovis' family said before the season, we keep hearing from people in our area, USC got this guy, and USC got that guy, and USC got this guy, why are you going there? And they said, our kid's a good quarterback, too. We think he can compete here. And now he's got his shot. Well, Kurt Warner was his high school coach and raved about his accuracy. How you like this? How you like this for accuracy? Give your guy a chance. And Bonds goes out and delivers a big catch. Now remember, just a few plays before, we saw Rhea miss on a wide open receiver down the middle of the field. Momentum swings on the accuracy of your quarterback just like that. I thought Graham Harrell showed tremendous confidence in the freshman quarterback, Rod. 
back-to-back, -back, super aggressive play calls. Off the big run, they take a shot, and then they throw a fade, uh, really not holding back because he is making his first appearance as, as a true freshman. I agree, Q, and, and those are, are simple, easy tosses for him. He doesn't have to worry about seeing linebackers and safeties in the middle of the field. It's my guy can make a play or not. And there's no reason not to take a chance with your young quarterback that in a situation like that. I commend both Harrell for the call and for um, Slovis for the execution. Darion Grimm needs a return for Fresno State here. And he goes head over heels to the 27. This was 17-13 just a couple of plays ago. Can I talk baseball for a second? Go ahead. Sunday night baseball in Philly tomorrow. Always looking for a gap. For the series finale, Pete Alonso and the Mets, Bryce Harper and the Phillies. Bryce Harper, new dad, by the way, son crew. Uh, that's part of the wild card chase in the National League. Coverage starts 7 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app right after the U.S. Open tennis coverage. Yeah, I, I like baseball. I like tennis, too. Well, I've already been pigeonholed as the baseball guy. Q's teeing me up on the 1959 Go Go Sox World Series here oh, at the Coliseum. Well, that's true. So well, we got to break you in somehow. Though, yeah, right? I got to fit my uh, need here. Rivers across the 30, and he spins in the arms of Griffin, who is the son of artist Warren G. So they hit the east side with the pass. Mm. I got you. <laughs> go ahead, go more, go more lyrics. You're there. Go with it. I think America's voted no on that. <laughs> Q can help us regulate this. Oh, yeah. Mount up regulators. <laughs> <laughs> that song never gets old. No, it's one of the best. Second and four. Now tipped and incomplete. Third and four. So there's a question not only about Warren G, but there's also a question about the G that you circled uh, earlier oh yeah so fight on there was a there was a student section that said fight on right 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 there right the G was G's back now the, the G was gone you put yeah. the G to the right of the H it's a telestrator I'm just trying to point out that a G was missing <laughs> you, you were just rushing it a little bit we had the spelling bee was a couple months ago <laughs> Third down and four. Reyna under sees and down he goes. Jackson was in first. Rector met him. And fight on indeed. In order. This defensive line is really the strength of this defense. I mean, up front, these guys are athletic. They are big. You see the twist there. You see Drake Jackson coming from the outside to the inside on that little stump move. Number six is now wearing They can't find it and can't handle it. That D-line looks vicious mm, yeah. for USC. Cusick to Vaughn's, and they nearly got there again. Vaughn's waves it off and checks up, and Fresno State has to scramble back to it because we cannot let a spelling mistake go. We are that uh, much of the grammar. <laughs> police. Yeah, petty, <laughs> I think, is the word for it. So hey. this is earlier. Yeah. You yeah. were putting the G in the general vicinity. Yeah, I'm, you know, it's a telestrator. You ever try to write with a telestrator? That's why we only draw circles. It was basically fidget on. <laughs> That's better than uh, not having the G at all. That's true. Again, if you're the G and you're going to do the whole thing where you're going to paint your body, yeah. you can't leave. Well, that's true, too. Hold your position, you please. You speak like you've had experience painting your whole body. Uh, <laughs> Again, America votes no. <laughs> Democracy in action. First out for USC at Slovis. Freshman uncorks again. Deep ball. He's feeling confidence, and this one is ripped off. Jaron Bryant, the senior out of the Fort Worth Metroplex, intercepts it. The difference here, he threw into double coverage on the other throw to Vaughn's, he found the single coverage and threw the ball. And Heldon's telling him, don't rush it. Find the single covered guy. No reason for you to throw into double coverage. That was greedy. Yes. Q, you're absolutely right. Feeling himself. Let the kid have a little fun, guys. 
Yeah, I think Helton is saying, not that kind of fun. Well, you just, Q, you just credited Graham Harrell for giving him the chance. That one, maybe you want him to check it down, right? Absolutely. Or just, just look somewhere else. You don't look into double coverage. Jorge Reyna, again under pressure. This one down the middle for Grimm, and it is a bullseye into USC territory. And at the end of the third quarter, Fresno State trumpets its presence again on a 52-yard strike. The Bulldogs aren't going away. It's an 18-point game. College football playoff lives on ESPN. The LA Coliseum, the site of a third Olympic Games, coming up in less than a decade. And you think of all the events, Q documented it earlier, all the events that have happened here in this Coliseum since the early 1920s when it went up. And I know these fans are starved for another very successful season. And the flame of college football just beginning to burnish on this first full Saturday of season 150. Fresno State has the football after a big strike at the end of the third quarter, 52 yards. Reyna finds his way across the 30, and that is a nifty bit of footwork. His grandfather said, under pressure, he's fine. He would handle his nerves and everything today without any problem. He had a lot of pressure right there. He didn't panic, made little subtle moves and got down the field and now Fresno State is in business again. One of the most interesting things I've heard in a while was from Jorge Reyna who has a number of tattoos on his body, some celebrating his family and he said look his family doesn't necessarily love tattoos but the rule in the family is be your own person. And here he is at the Coliseum trying to lead Fresno State back to a memorable comeback. Again, he and his tattoo artist uh, developed a number of these. He's got one that honors the women in his family. He's so close with his family. Well, he, he was raised essentially by his grandmother and grandfather, he told us. He calls them mom and dad. His dad has been in his life and has been his football coach and, you know, dad uh, as well but his grandparents are really special to him. Doesn't have much of a relationship with his mother since he was about 16. Parents divorced. But he is a genial guy. And I mean, we've lived the roller coaster with his father, Jorge, as well. During the course of this game, he was downtrodden early with the fumble and the sack. He was elated with the first touchdown pass and now edge of his seat some more for the elder Jorge Reyna. Well, he coached him as a kid and up into his days at Fresno State as a quarterback, but tonight he's not a quarterback coach. He's just dad, and he's riding the emotions of watching your kid perform, and whether it's Pop Warner or the Little League or baseball, every parent knows what that feels like. Reyna up the middle. And you think about what Reyna told us about his upbringing in football. He said, we went to a couple of those camps, and I didn't really enjoy it. I, I like being coached by my dad more. And there's this gritty feel for Fresno State and Jorge Reyna. You can hardly find a major college quarterback now who doesn't or wasn't raised with a quarterback coach you know, that they paid for and the like. That's not him. This is a blue-collar team. He's a blue-collar guy and blue-collar family. And they're not giving up here. They're fighting their way through this. Yeah, his guru has his own blood. As it's third down coming up for Fresno State, the intended target, Jared Rice. Rice hasn't been much of a factor in this ball game. USC wanted to take away Rivers and Rice. Rice came alive the last drive. They haven't used him much here. I mean, Rivers did. Rice now, they've overthrown him. But you know, the young receivers who get single coverage, and it looks like they may have it down here, may be able to come through for them. That's Darion Grimm who had the touchdown. Poked it, drops it. 
The yeah. All-American wrestler can't hang on, and it's fourth down. They're down three scores. The field goal is an option here. I, I think at this point you probably should kick the field goal because what gives you the confidence that you can get the ball in the end zone when you've had two shots out of here and you haven't made it? Especially if you kicked a field goal earlier, you have to kind of assume yeah. you're going to pair it with another one, right? right to make exactly. it make sense. And then you're down by two scores with almost the entire fourth quarter to go. But no, they're going here. So they're saying, essentially, Fresno State, here's the ball game. Tough to kick the first one and not the second one, though. They're going fourth down and five late in the play clock. Yeah, and it's going to be a timeout. Yeah, we're, we're not fans of this call. You got 12 minutes to go. First charge timeout. The half for USC. USC calls the timeout. Jeff Tedford has more time to think about it. Fourth down next. Next Saturday, outstanding doubleheader on ABC, 3.30 Eastern. Texas A&M and number one, Clemson in the shadow of Howard's Rock. And then at 7.30, LSU and Texas, both games on the ESPN app. Timeout, Clay Helton. Fourth down coming up, and Clay Helton went a long way for this timeout. Oh, he's just like a sprinter. Look at the top of the screen there. Now, there wasn't a receiver wide open or anything like that, but he saw something he didn't like. And this gives Fresno State a chance to reconsider. And you have to kick. You have to extend the game whenever you can. They took a field goal earlier this half. And now in a three-score game, they will kick with Silva. And he strikes it on through. So it's 31-16, 12-23 to go. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. From end zone to end zone, Goodyear more driven. So kicking the field goal not only gets you from the three score game to the two score game, it keeps the pressure on USC and the pressure on their true freshman quarterback. You don't want to make it easier on them. You want him to still have to play and he's coming off of having thrown a pick. I think, you, I think Quinn has an opinion on where they should kick this yeah, ball. Well, what are you doing with this kickoff, Rod? Uh, one thing I'm not doing, I'm not kicking it to Bayless Jones. I don't care if I take a penalty, but Q, I, I wouldn't want him to have the ball. What do you say? No, I agree. I just wonder what your options are. Whether you're going to squib it, direction, pop it up in the air, maybe uh, beg for a fair catch. Well, I wouldn't mind taking a shot at kicking it away from him and making someone else return it or try and pin him in the corner, but I'm not gonna kick it to him and let him have a choice of a left or right return uh, or, or middle. I don't want him to have any choices. I'd rather kick it out of bounds and let them have the ball. He's already taken one back for a touchdown and had a 61 yarder that was nullified by penalty. This one to the sideline, it's still Jones. They do hem him in though. Doesn't have the whole field to work with, so just across the 25, and it's first down USC. Keaton Slovis, freshman out of the state of Arizona, Desert Mountain High School. And he's in for JT Daniels, who went out with an injury. We saw Daniels over on the sideline. And the question is, what does the play calling look like for Graham Harrell in the final 12 and change? Well, the last couple series have indicated that they're putting the game in the hands of the offensive line. And they've run it more and they've challenged them and the offensive line has responded. And if you're Fresno State, you know that, so you should be thinking run blitzes on first down. Run! Malapai to the edge, breaks it down, and gets crushed at the 30-yard line. And so not only is USC trying to win this game, they're trying to learn what they have. I, Clay Helton, 5-7 and seven last year. There's some pressure. The seat's getting a little warm. Here's what's coming up for them, and it ain't easy. Yeah, and they get Stanford next week, and both Stanford and USC look like they will have backup quarterbacks starting that game since K.J. Costello got hurt for Stanford today, and J.T. Daniels got hurt earlier tonight for USC. Got Utah and Washington, two huge Run! games before that bye week pre-Notre Dame. Couple of runs to Malapai, Walker the stop third down. Now this is an interesting decision for Bert Watts, the defensive coordinator at Fresno State. You have a third down, what should be a passing situation. Do you play coverage and try to make, get, get the freshman to make a mistake, or do you try to rattle him and bring pressure? I think he'd be comfortable with pressure because he thinks, I got one-on-one -on -one and great receivers, I'll throw it up. I think they were more likely to play coverage here. 
Four down linemen. They come with four and get around the corner. He got hit. That's an incomplete pass. Andrew Wright came off the edge and stamped out the drive. And they did play coverage, but the pressure was much better by Fresno State. Andrew Wright off the corner goes completely around McKenzie. And that ball looks like, from that angle, it looks like it could have been, you know, a backwards pass. Ronnie Rivers back to receive the punt. The Aussie Ben Griffiths, 27 years old, ready to boot it away. A punting import. Pops it in the air to the 31. Fresno State on the ball. The Mountain West champs from last year down two scores. ESPN College Football is presented by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Could be the greatest game for a back in college football history. 2005 against Fresno State, Reggie Bush, 513 total yards. Who needed Lendell White that day? Uh, Reggie Bush did it himself, and you think about the Heisman trophies. You got Marcus Allen. You're, you're going to add five there. Well, it, it should be up there. Yeah. You know, I understand the NCAA rules and that, you know, they made USC remove his jersey and all that. But you know what? You, you can't erase what your eyes have seen. Yeah, you can't unring a bell. No. And no. he rang the bell enough that day that Reggie Bush's number five should certainly be up there. Tailback you it used to be. Now maybe wide receiver you, depending on how the air raid goes. Poke it. Stop before the 40. You got Jeff Tedford over on the other sideline. He's the guy that they should have called Fresno State on stopping Reggie Bush the week before that Fresno State USC game. Jeff Tedford's Cal team lost to USC, but Reggie Bush only had 86 yards. Now they got smoked by Lendell White, so you kind of pick <laughs> your poison. <laughs> <laughs> you buried the lead. Yeah, sir. I mean, they, they were tailback you. They had two great ones yeah. at that point. Yeah. Jeff Tedford never won at the Coliseum as a Cal head coach. This is Cropper. We've seen him off the end around a couple of times in a first down Fresno State. This is still a game now. It's a two score game. Fresno State clinging to some hope here. Behind the local kid, Jorge Reyna. Uh, keep in mind, there are young receivers for Fresno State trying to make an impact after you know, Kashawn Johnson left after last year. Great player for them. They're trying to fill that hole. They've got a lot of youngsters. Now, when they've had time, they've had guys open. They've had pressure, and Reyes missed a couple of throws. Kashawn Johnson hanging out with Cliff Kingsbury with the Cardinals now. Yep. Rain on first down. Couldn't really set his feet, so he checks it down to Hokit, who drags now Ote Ote out of bounds. And there you see the All American wrestler in Hokit. Tough to get some points against. Turned down a wrestling scholarship at Drake and instead came here. And he was supposed to redshirt this year as a linebacker and then play next year and have a shot at getting to the NFL. But they had so many injuries at running back, they asked him to move over. And he said, Yeah, no problem. I'll nobody, do it. nobody messes with him. <laughs> Why would you? Reyna has a tip. Q, I want to ask you, how do you think wrestling translate to foot, uh, translates to football? You cover a lot of it. Well, it's great. I mean, I mean, you talk to a guy like Matt Millen, who who really talks about, especially for D and O line, uh, leverage, the uses of hands, uh, balance, the whole push pull mechanics. We rarely see a, a skill position guy as a wrestler, but but there's uh, dozens and dozens of, of guys in the NFL whose backgrounds started as, as young wrestlers. Well, the way Tufele plays, he could have been a wrestler. Great hands, great feet, great balance inside. He's been disruptive tonight for that USC front four. Reyna off his back foot, gets some air under it, and Grimm just gets a piggyback ride from Taylor Stewart. And it's third down coming up. Just to finish up with, with Josh Hokett. 
He's Fresno's first All-American wrestler in almost 20 years. He won four matches last year in, in Pittsburgh in the consolation round. Okay, so he's knocked out of the championship round pretty early. And he swept four straight matches. You, you talk about toughness and, and a hard road to becoming an All-American. Now he's going to go up to heavyweight and still wrestle this year as well. He's put on some weight again to, to be the running back. We haven't seen Rivers at all. Hokett's been in on this drive. Reyna breaks it down, unloads. Oh, a beautiful comeback for Chris Coleman to make the grab and a first down. Fresno State, a much needed 27. What a clutch catch by Coleman. You know, Reyna stayed alive, but that ball was a little bit offline, but Coleman comes up with it, and all of a sudden, Fresno State has the chance to pull within one score. And you can count on one thing from USC. Pendergast is not going to go down without a fight. He, he will bring pressure to try and make something happen. Rivers back in. Reyna looking that way. Rector gets pushed away from the play. Reyna is going to dance out of bounds right at the 15. Second down coming up. Well, this makes that decision to kick a field goal look pretty good because you got a chance to get a touchdown if you're Fresno State, cut it to one score, and have plenty of time left in the game. How about Clay Helton called the timeout that led yep. to the field goal? Yep. Fresno State was lined up on fourth down, seemingly to go for it. USC called the timeout, and now it's a two-score game. Eight minutes to go. Rivers is back in, and he's really good catching the ball out of the backfield. Will they bring pressure? USC comes with four. Reyna has it tipped and it flutters incomplete. It was Drake Jackson who got the hands in the air and it's third down and seven. This is really two down territory. And Q, I think you would agree with me here that, you know, you need a couple, t a couple scores. So third down, fourth down here. You should be thinking about your best plays that you've worked on down here and what you've scouted for all offseason about USC and their tendencies down here. Will you get coverage or will you get pressure? I agree with you. The tight end's been quiet all day. 16 and white, near side. Tight to the formation. That's Rice. Three to snap it for Reyna. Pressure's coming from the right side. Free runner. Reyna got jostled, and it's incomplete. They brought pressure from the from the right side of the defense, but also brought Greg Johnson from the wide side. So you'll see it from two sides, from the bottom and from the top. And Johnson comes in untouched, and there was pressure from the other side as well. Yeah, they ran Rice on a, on a, on a post pattern and ran a wheel with Rivers behind it. It was great coverage by USC. They're going for it, guys. Fourth down and seven, two-score game. Crowd swells. Got to snap it. They do. Reyna has his man inside the 10. Zane Pope looks like he's right at the marker. He's got quite the paint job on his jersey, and he's got a huge grab for Fresno State. You know, these receivers are getting their chance, and they have come up with some big catches on third and fourth down. It's just an issue of protection and occasionally accuracy. But, man, this is a gritty, tough, hard-nosed Fresno State team. Proper in motion. Reyna looking back the other way, wants the screen. Rivers can't bring it in. Reyna has had trouble all night with the touch passes out of the backfield. That's about the third or fourth one where his throw has been a little off. Now, now he may get better with that as the season goes along. This is week one. You know, so the touch passes are the tougher, th tougher things. The, the plays where he's had to air it out, a little bit more free. He's missed a couple of those. But remember, this is game one for him. Game one in about three years. 
just northwest off the 105 of his home, by the way, with a huge crowd here for him. Reyna over the middle. He's got a touchdown. Chris Coleman, who had a big catch on the drive, and now it's a nine-point game for USC. Coleman is down. The sophomore out of Bakersfield injured at the goal line. Heck of a throw. This has a lot of mustard on it, and what a catch by Coleman. I mean, that thing was thrown up complete dart, and he managed to get in there, and, you know, Dad's got to be happy about that. He's got a little kid sleeping on him. Can't wake him up. Brother sleeping on him. That's Jorge's brother. I, you can't celebrate completely when you got, you got somebody napping on you. How's he sleeping, by the way, during this thing? You know what it's happens? past his bedtime. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Pac-12 after dark. But a few years from now, he'll swear that he was awake. They're going for one. As they should. Extend the game. Yep. If you miss, if you go for two here and you miss it, you're down two scores. You just keep it within range of a one-score game plus a PAT, a two-point conversion. High snap, handled fine. Don't sleep on Fresno State, even if you're five. Uh, fear the turtle, SVP. Big win today for you, buddy. Thank you, sir. This is Carr on the return to the 26-yard line. Just make sure you ask SVP if his boys had to hang 79. Yeah. 79? At some point, you let it go, right? Yeah. At some point, take a knee, like like Mac Brown did at the end of the North Carolina game. It might have might have hurt himself <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Well, Max said after the game, he said, we tried to we tried to ruin it for the kids, and even we couldn't do it. So <laughs> congratulations, Jordan Congrats, Mac. Yeah. yeah. So Keaton Slovis back out for USC. Freshman quarterback taking over for the injured JT Daniels and Carr zigzagging to about the 30-yard line. A little fisticuffs up at the top. Gain of four, second down. Keep this in mind. In the first half, USC ran 50 offensive plays. That was number 32 in the second half. Daniels is on the sideline with an apparent knee injury. So they've changed. They've gone away from throwing the ball in the, in the air raid, and they've said, offensive line, go win the game. Solvis gets touched, keeps his feet. Slovis on the move, and he goes down. This is where it's important to note again that USC now with the air raid has a playbook of about 30. So when you come in, you know the plays. Yes. It's just how much have you repped them. Exactly. Exactly. Nothing should surprise you defensively. And again, this was a quarterback competition. There were four guys, so everybody got their touches. Carr puts his head down and bowls his way for a major first down in this game. That's a heck of a run by Carr. That's as good a run as any back by USC tonight with its importance. They needed that third down pickup. They needed to make sure they took some pressure off of Slovis, and he just lowered the shoulder and gave every bit of his 215 pounds to pick up the first down. Ankle issues in the past, back issues in the past. Steven Carr is 100% hail right now. As this short throw goes to Pittman, it'll be second down for USC. Interesting that they snapped that ball with 15 to go on the play clock. You know, I think they'd be a little more patient. Good, good point, Q. That's one of the issues with the spread and with the air raid, is that they just seem oblivious to clock management at times and burning some clock. This is a 20, and the ball goes back. Malapai found a crease and gets to the first down line to gain. 
JT Daniels trying to cheer as much as you can when you're stabilized over on the sideline. He talked to us about how much he's built those bonds with the offensive line, with the other quarterbacks. More of a magnetizing presence this year. On the ground again, how many tackles have Malapai and Carr broken tonight? Look, well, they're good runners, and they will make guys miss, but also keep in mind, week one, you see a lot of missed tackles, whether it's in the open field or a guy coming in to fill a gap. It's because you don't tackle in fall camp. You know, limited amount of contact, and you don't want to get guys hurt. So the week one is used really as the opening time to work on tackling. Again, Q, 14 to snap it, and they pull the trigger. Uh, Fresno State has three timeouts remaining in this game. USC needs points on this drive to feel comfortable. It's a great point downstairs by Quinn. Yeah, absolutely. Well, from the SC perspective, if you go score, it doesn't matter because you you're not managing the clock. But if you don't score, you've given Fresno State plenty of time to try and tie the game. Yeah, you have two options to win this game, run out the clock or score and make it a two-score game, and now a whistle before the snap. It's timeout USC. Second charge timeout. 3.31 to We're go in the opener for the Trojans before Pac-12 play starts with Stanford next week without JT Daniels, it seems. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. From end zone to end zone, Goodyear. More driven. And Monday, Brian Kelly in Notre Dame against Louisville. The debut for Scott Satterfield. He feels like he can make them a contender in the ACC in short time. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific from Cardinal Stadium on ESPN and the ESPN app. Notre Dame has made life very difficult on USC three of the last four seasons, including the season-ending game last year that dropped USC to 5-7. and seven. Malapai is met. Michael Walker was in there. It's fourth down coming up. Big play by Fresno State. They anticipated that USC would keep it on the ground. They came with the run blitz inside, got their linebackers involved, and stopped Malapai before he got started. You I mean, like them going for it here? You, you really can't. I mean, that's too risky. Uh, I think they're going. The offense wow. is out there. Three no, timeouts for Fresno he's, State. He's got to call timeout. He's got to be burning clock and going to call timeout. It would be their last timeout. Yeah, because if you do this and you don't get it, forget about being on the hot seat. You could take the delay of game and punt, too, by yes, the way. Yes, you could do that. Instead, he uses the last timeout. USC timeout. This is the third and final timeout of the half. Yeah, that, that's the, the right move. Timeout. Burn some clock. So I want your feeling on this, both Rod and Quinn. You got USC at five and seven. We have this list of coaches on the hot seat. How hot should Clay Helton's hot seat be? And then what do you think of these other guys too? Look, I, you can put Gus Malls on in there every year. He knows that. <laughs> and it makes no sense whether he wins 10 games or eight. He's going to be on that list. I'm not a big fan of talking about coaches on the hot seat in week one before the season begins. And, you know, you can make a, an argument that Helton shouldn't be on the hot seat with his first two years. Trojan Nation would, would respond, and critics would respond, Q, and say, well, Sam Darnold won a lot of those games. But the fact is, he won those games. Last year was bad. Q, your view? Well, this, this place is filled with expectations. Great tradition here. One of them is not going five and seven. Oh, they're going for it here. They are. After a timeout, fourth down and one. Fresno State wanted movement, and now Keaton Slovis, the freshman who just got the reins of this offense, checks off. This is risky. This is very risky. They do snap it. He mishandles the snap, and Walker explodes the play. Wow. Fresno State's taken over. Wow. You know, the book says you kick the ball, and you ask your defense to win the game for you. Now you're asking your defense to win the game with half a field and with momentum now with Fresno State. Unreal. Yeah, this is, I, I'm, I'm stunned by that call. I, I thought the timeout was to burn the clock and to punt the ball. Now you've given Fresno State 
a real chance in real life. Now Jorge Reyna, who grew up wanting to be a USC Trojan, dreamed about last second drives in the Coliseum, has the controls for Fresno State with three timeouts. Reyna catapults it, and Grimm just can't get free. There was a lot of contact with Griffin, and it's second down. He, he had him out there. There was some mutual combat by the two. And as long as it's mutual, you're not going to get a pass interference call. Both guys have hands on each other. That's a good no call. Mutual combat. Second down. Fresno State has never led in this game. USC was up 14 love. Reyna incomplete, too tall for Grimm. There's a little bit of a sense of desperation by Fresno State here. You know, they've used Ray, uh, Reyna's legs most of the game. They have time. They could have used that after that first throw to get back to using his legs and some of the short throws. Now it's all or nothing on third down and, and fourth down if they don't pick it up on third down. Think about what his dad, the coach, his high school, his youth, his everything coach, all the way through his upbringing is thinking with a heart of flutter. Third down, Reyna, incomplete, too short for Zane Pope. And it's fourth down. Now this isn't the game because Fresno State has three timeouts, but it's a watershed play. It is, it is, and you can now think about what does USC do defensively? I, having known Clancy Pendergast all these years, I, I just don't think he's going to sit back in coverage. He's had success when he's brought the pressure. Will Fresno State protect the quarterback here? Two in the backfield, including Rivers. Rice with a chip. Reyna gets away. Down the field, it is caught! Are you kidding me? Chris Coleman again! Are you kidding me? That catch was better than the one he made earlier. High points it, takes it away from Greg Johnson. Wow! 36 yards on fourth and ten for Coleman. Tense moments. Talk about clutch. My goodness. In his first FBS start, Jorge Reyna off the pump, down the sideline, intercepted! Isaiah Polamau! Heartbreak for Reyna. They do have three timeouts left, so the party isn't all night yet. And this is a wheel route out of the backfield for Rivers, but Polamau comes from center field with great range to make that play. That ball's in the air, and Dad sees it. That's one of the few times that Rea did not simply fired in there. He had his guy Rivers out there, thought he had plenty of time, and put it out there. But what range, what a really good play by Polamau. First down run, timeout coming. Malapai tackled by Rice. Fresno State has two remaining. So Paul Amau's uncle, Troy Palomalu, made a lot of plays that looked a lot like that in yes, his he career. Did. Yes, he did. Game clock operator, please restore the game clock to one third. He's playing center field right here. Watch him as he just watches 
Rhea's eyes, and he starts to move as he sees the eyes look over there. He smells out the wheel route right away, gets a great jump on it, and that's how you play center field. Those two steps were everything, weren't they? Made the difference. He watched the eyes. He got it right away. He got a jump on it. He was heading in that direction long before Rhea threw the ball. First interception for Jorge Reina tonight. And all he wants is the football one more time. The air raid goes one if by ground again. Malapai for a first down. And the last flecks of sand come out of the top of the hourglass for Fresno State tonight. Second charge timeout, Fresno State. This is a 30 second timeout. One timeout remaining, and if you're Jorge Reyna in your first FBS start, you've done so much. You've let so much out of your heart tonight. And Bull, his left tackle, says, it's all right. Hey, you're, you're talking about a guy who's come back home to play in front of his family and friends, more than 50 family members here. His first start since transferring from junior college at L.A. City College. Dad, his, his friend, his coach, all these years, sitting up there with the family, watching, living and dying with every throw, every run. And he got beat up early, and then he settled in, and he had a shot there at the end. And how about for USC? Edge of the chair all night for the Trojan fans who saw leads get frittered away last year. And with ranked teams littering the schedule the first five weeks, you don't want to call it a must, but they certainly wanted to have this one badly. Malapai on the run, Hughes with the stop and the final timeout on the way. Third and final timeout of the half for Fresno State. I mean, this you see what's on the horizon final. for USC after a five and seven season, and if two and three was intolerable, this was a must have. Oh yeah, they had to have this one. You get Stanford, you go to BYU, and then you've got that really rough stretch of Utah, Washington. You get a bye, and then Notre Dame. So the first five games will say an awful lot about where things are, and you may be doing it all without JT Daniels, your starting quarterback, and it could be in the hands of your true freshman. A guy who was just coming into self-actualization, JT Daniels. He was really believing in the system, and, uh, and they were a rocket ship the first couple drives of this game. Absolutely, and he's grown and matured as a player, quarterback, and a person, and the way the game started, it looked like this season was going to be one that was going to be tremendous for him. Then he got hurt right before the first half ended, and who knows if he'll be back this season or in a couple of weeks. So a modified pistol into a kneel down, and you can put your quarterback in some harm's way there. We saw South Carolina at the end of their game flying toward the North Carolina quarterback, and that should be it. One more kneel down for USC. How about Clay Helton? That fourth down decision to go for it and to give Fresno State great field position, you could probably say that Polomau Poloma pretty much saved Clay Helton this week from a disastrous decision. Oh, he, he did, and he knows about the yeah. pressure. Clay Helton knows what he was walking into. He's been very open about it, and his team has given him, oh my goodness, maybe nothing yet. A little juggle one last time, and if you want to go home into your bed with your heart in your throat, smart to be a Trojan fan tonight. They are going to win. <laughs> on the fringe against a gritty Fresno State team. And don't count out this Fresno State team. Remember, they've won 22 games the last couple seasons. Boise State looks strong in the Mountain West, but so does Fresno State. Whale of a game to start the season. USC 31, Fresno State 23. Polamau saves the day for USC in the red zone, and the Trojans go to 1-0. and oh.
We say farewell from the Coliseum for Rod Gilmore and Quint Kesnick and our entire crew. I'm Jason Benetti. Thanks for watching. Let's send it to SVP. He's got Sports Center. He's got one big thing. He's got all kinds of highlights. SVP, take it away.